welcome back to Dateline. I'm Chris Hansen. <laughs> Crap. <laughs> welcome back. I'm Hudson Hubbard, and tonight we're playing here on Spike Hidden. Seat. We are playing Pendragon Sixth Edition, which has yet to be released uh, by Chaosium. But of course, I've homebrewed my own little plot and settings, and we're just taking the rules that you, that are available right now with the <clears throat> quick start scenarios, both the Sword Tournament and the Great Hunt which are free on Chaosium's website. Just taking those rules and just incorporating them with my plot. But yeah, I'm uh, back here, of course, with our glorious knights. Uh, welcome back, gentlemen. I hope uh, Hello. You, you've had a pleasant week and a pleasant last weekend. Excellent. Hey, we're here. Yeah. We are here. Yeah. I met Chris Hansen. That was cool. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's cool. That was pretty neat. Yeah, I met Chris okay. It was a weird scenario to meet him in, but he's still yeah. a cool guy. I mean, I got that to be on TV. I think that was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. just like, it's way too dark, and I, I'm glad I didn't say it. He looked nothing like he did on that chat room, though. But... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Well, welcome uh, yeah. back. Welcome back. Let's, uh, let's <laughs> go around the table real quick, and everybody just... Tell us who you are and uh, quickly who you're playing. Uh, we'll start off with <laughs> Michael Scott. Take uh -oh. off. Hi, I'm Michael Scott. Yes, I've seen The Office. Haha, <laughs> silly name. LOL. <laughs> uh, I'm playing Sir Everain. He's just like me, a big simp. The man loves love. And you know what? We love him for it. Uh, as of right now, he is rolling really poorly. And he's about to get his ass kicked in this first fight. But thank you for tuning in. And uh, RIP to Sir, Sir Everain. You got it. You got it. No, you, you're going to do fine, I promise. Or maybe not. Who knows? Yeah, probably not. And and below you, uh, <laughs> pronounced Sir Swinhild, who are yep. you? Well, uh, hi, I'm Price. Uh, you can follow me here on Twitch at PriceVA. I'm starting to stream somewhat again. But the main reason I'm here tonight is not to talk about my Twitch channel. It's to talk about and play some more Pendragon with Sir Swinhild who also is known as Quinn Hild, who's also been known as Swin Hild, who's also been known as Quinn Hild. But we're going to go with Swin Hild. That's the definitive pronunciation until we inevitably mess it up. It's also and... known as hot stuff. And Sorry. Yeah. What? Daddy. Daddy. Um... <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Uh... Anyways, pin, dr pin daddy. Um... This has gone off the rails. Where we are... Not even five minutes in, we're already off the rails. King King Arthur. I think we're right at where we need to be. Um, yeah, let's do. Let's let's. I I, I cut a man's head in half last session. So yes, yes. Let's did. do it again. You impaled him. Excellent. Thank you, Sir Quinhild. And next up, you love him and you hate him. Uh, Matt, who are you? <laughs> Hello, Matthew Stevenson here. Uh, otherwise known as Matt, and otherwise known as Granola Clusters, but. We're going to go with Sir Clarion tonight. Sir Clarion uh, is a brave, noble, and capable knight who dropped a sword last episode. But he's going to find it, he's going to pick it up, and he's going to carry the battle forward uh, with where it's at. And is rather excited to do so, because now Sir uh, Daddy has an upper hand of splitting a man's head, and now we need to catch up. So, that would be an objective. Thank you. Uh, take care. Have a blessed night. Um, <laughs> all right. Yes. <laughs> excellent. 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 And Matt will probably murder another knight tonight. So, that will be yes. fun to watch. That's the goal. We don't know if it's friendly or not, or if it's one of them. We'll see. You know, A kill's a kill. Guys. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, uh... Last but not least, uh, the gentleman above you who's looking off in the distance, looking for a fair maiden. Uh, Trevor, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> Roy, uh, my name's Trevor. Now I'm trying, to get, I'm trying to get my accent down. My name's Trevor. Well, I'll be playing Sir Avalok tonight. And uh, we just took out someone with our axe <clears throat> and we're, we're charging into the enemy. And I'm I'm done talking. Let's get the ball rolling because I'm ready to keep fighting. Understood, understood. And we're going to get that ball Thanks, rolling. Man. Yes. Well, thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank you for Ian in the chat. Welcome. Welcome to tonight's episode of Pendragon. And uh, I'll do a quick recap 
of our last episode. Um, and again, I'm Hudson Hubbard, our game master for tonight. And let's get down to it. So, um, our story started off last week. A couple of months after the events of the Sword of the Tournament. It is still the year of 510, year of our Lord. Our Tur newly tournament. crowned King Arthur was walking around Londinium with his fellow knights who are present in front of you. He was making some adjustments to the city, walking around with his council, and they were counseling him well. Then a rider came through one of the main gates, crying for help, that the good petty king Leo de Grantz was calling for help, for King Arthur and the army of Britain's help. His castle had been besieged by a great army, a great host being led by King Urians, who was not in agreement with the crowning of the young boy King Arthur. And so our knights with King Arthur led off with an army of 600 knights, squires, and guards to lift the besiegement of King Leodegrance's castle. They arrived in a town, or a small village, in Oxford. They made their camp that night outside the lake, an old and old Roman uh, cathedral that was next to the lake. Our knights that are present in front of you were given a mission to go and scout out the enemy's encampment in front of the castle and report back to Arthur, which our knights did. But what our knights found, that very eventful night, was, I feel like I'm saying knight a lot. Knights, knight, 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 yeah. knight, knight. All right, back to it. <clears throat> Where are the days? Under the moonlight. It's what, called D-A-E-S, you know, because it's medieval. Medieval. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So our knights rode off into the, the night sky and came to the enemy's camp. They hid in the shrubbery in the forest as they shrubbery. looked down the hill shrubbery. and saw the enemy encampment outside the besiegement of this big castle. This castle is a... Uh, it has a moat in front of it, which is bringing some um, uh, uh, failures to the enemies. They, they're having a hard time gaining access to this castle. But the enemy does have the left and right flank to their camp guarded very well. They had anti-cavalry stakes placed, but our fellow knights took it upon themselves Instead of reporting back to Arthur, they went to the left flank and began dismantling these stakes. And so that's where we left off. After dismantling most all the stakes for the cavalry the next morning to make a successful charge, they were ambushed upon by a squad of soldiers of Gore, which are being led by King Urien, or Urien's. But King Urians is not in the area. But there are three Knights of Gore still left. And we're going to start off with Michael, of course. Michael, you were having bad luck last time. I'm sure we can make it up this time. <coughs> You're gonna, we're going to make out this time? Oh, I'm nice. sorry. There must have been a delay. No, we're, we're going to make it oh. up this time. Yeah, well, I'm dying. You roll. You Am I going to you? Okay. So no, no. Uh, that's not what I'm saying. No. Roll for tongue? <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Yes, I need a uh, a flirtatious role, please, which is a thing. Um, okay, no. so real quick, really? okay. with our combat, and again, uh, for everyone who's just tuning in, uh, whether it's Twitch or YouTube, and if you haven't seen any of the prior episodes, this is still a new system for all of us. I have never played any of the Pendragon, uh, Uther Pendragon, or any of the other stuff um, by Chaosium in this universe uh, up until now and so has our players none of them have also played so we're still learning the uh, roles and everything um, so there might be some points where we stop and look at the rules um, and that's okay because I want it also to be a teaching lesson or a learning lesson for the audience as well and your feedback helps us and most definitely helps me so please let me have it don't be nice 
Actually, please be nice. Okay, so to it. Roll for nice. Um, so with these combat rolls, they're going to be opposed. So you are fighting with your sword, if I'm correct. And yes. you're going to be rolling your sword's uh, value. And I'm going to be rolling my sword's value. And you are going to try to get lower than your value, but you have to make it higher than my value to be successful or critical successful. Cool. And just as a reminder, since I had a critical success on my passions, mm -hmm. um, I have a plus five to my sword value. So I'm instead of rolling under a 15, I'm rolling under a 25. That is correct. That is correct. Cool. Great. Uh, may I roll? You may, and I'm going to roll also. <clears throat> Dude! Got to get, get a 17 right. or lower. I have an 11. I've rolled a 4. Okay, and you were rolling a... You need to get a 25, 25 or, lower. or lower. Correct. Okay. So you got a 4 and I got 11, but you needed to be higher than me. So I take damage. You damaged Correct. me three last time, so my hit points are now 23 out of 26. Excellent. Thank you for letting me know. And I'm going to roll real quick. I need five D6s. Jesus Christ. Do I get to use my armor? Uh, yes, you'll be able to use your armor because we were both successful. It was a partial success. I finally found the word for it, unlike last time. But it was mm -hmm. a partial success, which means we both were successful. However, your uh, roll was lower than mine, so I did come out victorious, which means I will uh, be able to land damage on you. However, you do, in this instance, get to use your armor. So not all the time will our players be able to use their armor, which I kind of like. All right, five d sixes. Let's see. Kill, kill him. Twenty four. Why do you want Michael to die? I don't know. It'd be funny. That's twenty four okay. points Fair. of damage. <laughs> twenty four points of damage. And you'll so that is eight damage. So that means I have twenty three minus eight, which is um, which is 18. um. 15. 15. Excellent. <clears throat> and just real quick. Let's see. Sir Evrain, if we look at your health real quick. Below your hit points, you'll see knockdown and major wounds. And unconscious. Yes. So, how many, uh, how much hit points do you have left? You said 15. Correct. Okay, so you're right at a major wound. So, um, I'll let you pick where this major wound has been um, given to you by this Knight of Gore. Where would you like this major wound to be placed on your body? <laughs> you can chop off my left arm. Oh. Uh, oh, no. Oh. <laughs> no you, I wouldn't Is go it that, that major. major. It's, it's not that major. It's more like a deep cut. You said major. I think that's an extreme <laughs> slice right through my stomach. My intestines are <laughs> spilling out. <laughs> <laughs> you can use them as a rope. <laughs> it's just a flesh wound. Is it the flesh wound? Yes, this this is not that um, story, which would be funny, but you really could do a Monty Python Holy Grail with this system type thing. That'd be really funny. And we may. Yeah, that would be kind of yeah. Fun. Um. Uh, can you like just? Oh, that works. You want me, you, want to, you want me to pick? I do want you to pick. All right. So uh, let's say they, they nick you really good on, on the neck right here on your left shoulder. Ooh. <laughs> you uh, beheading. Out really, ah. really, oh, um, man. A, a lot. And so as this Knight of Gore brings down his great sword, cutting you, uh, missing your chain mail that's uh, kind of uh, given a um, entrance or it's uh, allowing for his blade to hit your neck, uh, and blood is, is spewing out. Excellent. So, next Better up... Cheap out on your chain mail. Get what you pay for. <laughs> next up is uh, our good old Sir Avalok. So... Right. Right. So you dealt damage to your knight last time, and he is down to 12 health. So... Another opposed roll for the both of us. I need to get a 17 or lower, and then I need to make sure that I get higher than you. So, that was the guy that I swung the axe at, and then I kept pushing forward. 
because it knocked them down, right? That's what we said. Yes, we can reverse yes, yes, time. yes, okay. your movement, yes. And that reminds me, uh, real quick, Sir Everain, um, you, you do get to move uh, as your final step in combat. Would you like to make any sort of movement in any way? I stand my ground. Okay. Oh, Excellent. man. And Sir Everain stands his ground. Sir Avalok, <laughs> let's what? roll. What? all we run for uh you're gonna be looking at your sword or axe whatever right yep and you're gonna roll for that value i got a three so i had a regular success and you need to get higher than me to beat that oh my god i rolled a two a two oh shit. i rolled a two that is going to be the same outcome as Michael or Sir Everain has done. But you get armor. You get armor. <laughs> you do get armor. You do get armor, but I will strike you. So let's see how much damage I do. It would be funny if it was all ones. I'm sure yep. Sir Everain would find that funny. Does everybody like the, <laughs> uh, funny. the sound? All six it is. All six it is. <laughs> all right, here we go. Um, eight. Uh, Eleven. Uh, 14 damage. Right. And you, uh, I'm going to subtract armor, that from your armor. 14, okay. So I'm looking at armor points. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, okay, so 16 armor points minus 14. Yep, so you'll okay. you'll take... Uh... Two? Well, no, I, I think... Or is it armor points minus your roll? Right, I think I think you subtract the 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 damage. I, be, I believe it's the damage you're subtracting from the armor. So if the armor is higher, then you wouldn't be taking any damage. Right. Okay. Right. So my armor protected me. Yes. So you're good. That who did that, by the way? The the knight of gore that's in front of you. So this hulking man is. Uh, y'all are both clashing. Let's say y'all are parrying, and he gets close. <laughs> to uh, uh cutting you or uh, getting inside of um are you, you are you wearing a helmet at all uh i would like to think that i have a helmet on let's Nasal say helmet. let's say it's kind of a small kind of nordic helmet so your right. face is still visible except you do have some metal right here protecting your nose That's let's say it's close to cutting into your cheek or eye um, but does still able to miss Sir Swinhild. Oh, uh, Sir Amalek, would you like to make any movement for your final phase of this? I say, whoa, watch it, fella. And I, uh, take, I I'll take three steps back. Okay, and you'll take three steps back. Uh, you're still engaged with this guy. Right. All right. <clears throat> Congratulations to you both. Excellent. And then Sir Swinhild. <laughs> What okay, so... Yes, and Sir Swinhill, last time you uh, took down the Knight of Gore in one uh, fell swoop. So mm -hmm. would you like to help any of your comrades, or would you... Yes. Okay. Uh, I would like to uh, target the knight who is attacking Sir Evrain. Excellent. And I, will I tell you to that. back off. It's mine. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I mean, if that's what you want me to do, I'll back off. I don't think I can talk, because I think my vocal cords have been severed. <laughs> Your head Actually, is now off. Sir just... Everain is a mute now. <laughs> Could I... Would it be possible for me to grab Sir Clarion's sword and give it what? to him? Oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> um, like, give him yes, his sword? you may, but it just like Sir Clarion, it will take a full round. Okay, so... Just, I'm trying to remember, right? So, so Clarion is standing there, no sword, but he hasn't taken any damage. Right. My pants Avalok, are still on. Right. Avalok taking a small amount of damage, and Evrain's Evrain's hurt. Right. Yeah. So yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh I'm going to assist Evrain. Okay. All right, let's roll and see what we get. All right, so, so I need to that. I am rolling for uh my great axe because a 15 so i need to get under a 15 for it to succeed right 
That is correct. Oh. Or right at a 15 for a critical success. Ah, oh, shit. Ooh. Oh, damn. Nice fell on the floor. Hold on. You're good. That'd be an eight. Perfect. And I failed anyways. Uh, so you have dealt damage. So roll for that damage. Okay. Where's my pin? So your dice fall on the floor a lot like my sword that you didn't help, but that's cool. That'd be 21. Uh, how do you kill this knight of gore who has just struck ah! Sir Everain in the throat, causing a major uh, blood spew to uh, engulf? I had it under his... control. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I want I go straight for um, like the side, like right in the. Right in the, like, upper ribs. Right in the kisser. Excellent. And you make a very large <laughs> indention in this knight's armor and body as he tumbles over part of his body. It's almost like cutting down a tree. Not all the way, but it ends up tearing itself and... Oof. 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 Yes. I love your description, Hudson. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, yes, we. I should have probably uh, said... Uh, warning or trigger warning before the show but yeah well too late sorry i mean they knew if, what they were in for when they turned on if you didn't, if you didn't the know. bad boys of twitch they call us yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah why would you go watch critical role on a thursday night when you can bah. watch us just mauling people that's right mauling and mauling that's why michael's wearing a beanie bad boy look bad yeah. boys next week we're playing the nba rpg ballin and next up, Sir Clarion, you've uh, oh. lost, lost your weapon. Uh, oh, real quick. I, why do I keep forgetting this? But Sir Swinhild, you do get a movement um, after this. Uh, can I... Can I... Can I move closer to Sir Clarion? Because I know he's unarmed. Oh, uh, sure. Yeah, I'll allow that. You get uh, a little bit closer to Sir Clarion. In, in front of Sir Clarion, there is a, a knight who is uh, about to attack him uh, once again. But Sir, Sir Clarion does have a, um, a, a, a moment where he, he can pick try to pick up his sword, but it will take one round to pick up that weapon. Okay. If I choose to do so. And sorry if, to everyone, including the audience. I'm having a really great time with struggling with words today, so just please mm -hmm. bear with me. That's okay. So, um, everyone is obviously thinking, hey, Sir Clarion, he's going to pick up his sword. Nope. Because I also, uh, in my list of weapons here, now I don't know if I'm carrying this one, but I have a, I have a mace in my, in my attacks on my character sheet. Uh huh. I don't know if that's hanging around my belt. In my character art, it is there as well. It's hanging off the belt as the arming sword is in hand. So I'm going to ask old Game Master here. Yeah, yeah is... you'd have it. Well, yeah, whoop, I, I mean, we're flipping out that mace. It also looks like he has a spear. Four of them, apparently. Oh, so according they, to they're kind of like javelins, I guess. Yeah. Huh. Okay, cool. um, I don't know if I brought those with me, but I definitely yeah. have this mace. Yeah. And I don't know if you guys have ever seen like a dent in the side of a car, but yeah, you're about to see inside of a person. So, All right, um, let's uh, ro 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 roll. All right, so There's time. My, I have a ten <laughs> value of mace, so I'm gonna I'm gonna roll. Here we go. Hope okay. you're ready. All right, <laughs> I got a two. Okay, I got a six. My value is ten. Excellent. You hit, and I will take damage. However, because we both were successful, but you were the higher success, I do get to use my um, armor. So, Shit. What is that damage? Uh, that is what we are... I'm going to roll in Google, because it is easier that way, and I do not have 5d6, which is what I'm rolling. So, I have 5d6. Wow. Would you like me to roll it for you? So I got... Oh boy. Okay, there we go. I got a six. I got a one for seven. I got another... 
got another six for 13. I got a three for 16. And I got a one for 17 total. That was, yeah, 5d6. I got two sixes, two ones, and a three. Okay, and tally that all up. 17. I, third, 17, okay. Third time I said that. It's cool, though. Don't worry about it. I'll let this one go. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so no, really. <laughs> 17, 14. So, yeah, um, that would be, I would take three points of damage. Did you just have to think? What? I'm bad no, at math. No, don't worry about it. <laughs> he went to art school. Yeah, I went to art school. I'm not a mathematician. <laughs> He's doing reverse math. If <laughs> <laughs> You should have seen me as a cashier a couple of years ago. Oh, no. <laughs> it's like one, right. two, three, four. A two. Um, three. Yeah, so I'll take three points of damage. Yeah. Okay. This game really is either you get a slight scratch or you get absolutely decimated. Like, yeah. it, it, that seems to be the... the then the, again, that's kind of how I feel, you know, when it was accurate, really yeah. was. Yeah. Alright, cool. So, yeah, I take three points of damage. Uh, Sir Clarion, was there anything else you would like to do uh, for movement-wise? I have my shield, so I'm going to hold my... Which I don't even know if I used before, um, but I'm going to hold my ground. Uh, with my now mace and shield, my sword can stay there. Okay, cool. Very nice. Uh, our major wound, Sir Eberain, you have been saved by Sir Swinhild, who is standing over you now. Perhaps Sir Swinhild throws out his arm to help you up <clears throat> if you have fallen, or comes to your aid and places his armored leather hands big strong on mm -hmm. your shoulder hands. to stop the yeah. bleeding or perhaps sir swinhild is helping sir clarion i moved but... i did move closer to clarion correct at correct. the end of my turn so i don't know if i'm standing like you're, you're... right yeah. that's, correct. that's correct there's one guy left there is one guy left i believe cool or sir avalok you you still have your guy right yeah. there's two yeah there's yeah, avalok there's and yeah, yeah. clarion sir avalok yeah. and the one in front of sir clarion uh, can I do my turn rolling for first aid? Um, yeah, you can, but here's the thing with first aid. So, uh, attempting first aid on yourself is done with a minus 10 skill modifier. Ooh. So, mm. so as long as I roll a negative four, I'll be fine. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> um, however, if you get done with this combat, uh, you would be able to leave, hopefully successfully, and get back to uh, your home base, uh, King Arthur's camp, where your squire can take the time to heal you, and you'll be better prepared for the morning battle to come. Great. Then I take my sword, and I charge at the last remaining person. Excellent. Oh, man. <laughs> Oh, man. Please succeed. Well, first I take some blood from my neck and I put it below my eyes. Like a... That's good. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Um, That's some pagan shit right there. And yeah. and and with that, I, am uh, I would like yeah. to remind everybody you can use a passion if you have not already used the specific passion once this day. Um, if you have used that passion, then the next morning, tomorrow morning... Um, in, in this universe that we're playing, uh, you'll be able to use that passion again. Um, if, but if Point. you have not used a passion, um, you, you are allowed to use it during combat or any point. Um, just let me know why you're using it. Great. I will roll a passion then. Uh, my adoration for Lady Morcad of the White Tower. That's nice. Who I do all of my good deeds for. Okay, so let's uh, see that roll real quick. Okay only dames that is a one so a success a success excellent Great. uh if you will put a let's see what did i say yes you are inspired and you gain a check to that passion so uh please check that passion and you're inspired, so you get a temporary plus five bonus to a single skill or trait chosen by you. 
Uh, mm. While the situation uh, persists. So you get a plus five. And yeah. Great. Uh, I charge at the guy. Excellent. Get so, him. Let's roll and let's see. Uh, what What is the value you're looking for? Uh, I'm still a 25 because I had the uh, plus five already. Or the plus 10 actually added to my sword. To my previous uh, critical passion success. Okay. You're at a 25. Well, because it's 15, I add a 10. Right. Because of a critical success. So he gets a freebie? Well, I get an automatic success, but I still have to roll higher than Huddy. Michael, Michael, Michael. I, I am so sorry. Uh oh. Uh oh. Spaghetti Spaghettios. <laughs> we should just restart this whole stream. Uh, Michael, I, <laughs> I, I, have done, again, everybody. I have done you Thank so you. wrong. I've, Welcome I've, to Hidden Spot. Um, so, <laughs> I'm glad I caught this because I knew something was wrong. I knew, I knew it, I knew it, and I just saw it. So, I will read this rule. But he um, always finds new rules just to fuck me over. I know. <laughs> no, no, this is actually in your benefit. Uh, hey! if, if a target value is 20, it becomes impossible to fumble. And that modified dice roll greater than 20 counts as a result of 20 and is a critical success. So, since your value is over 20, you cannot fail or fumble. You already automatically get a success, it seems, or a critical success. I thought we knew that, but I was rolling like a 4 and you were still rolling higher. So I got we both succeeded, but then you succeeded better than I did, regardless of my over 20. Michael, I want you to to self-reflect on the opportunities right now before you, meaning that you cannot fail, which means you don't have to charge. You could find an alternative way of uh, taking the enemy out. If you were a bitch. True. But I'm also bleeding shit. profusely through my neck. You and said. I would like to just go uh, make someone else bleed profi profusely through their neck. So the transient property. Thank you. Of mathematics. Yes. Subduing. Because I'm gonna... of the transitive property. Transitive, not transient. Transient's a homeless person. Transitive. <laughs> uh, I see. Let's I see. see. Let's see. Learning new go. words today. <laughs> Are any fun vocab words in the chat? <laughs> Where is circumcised? Okay, so. <laughs> Survey. Map keeper. Okay, well, we, we, we will stick with that then tonight. Um, I, I still, for some reason, I feel like I'm doing it wrong with that. But we will keep it that way for tonight. I just, I feel cool. like for some reason you automatically would have a success since you are over that li <coughs> limit. So whatever you rolled would already give you that success. I, I feel like you're supposed to get a, a, a boost for some reason, like a plus 10 your... or plus 15. <clears throat> I don't need your handouts. Okay. All right. Well, let's roll. <laughs> uh, let's just go with how we've been playing it. And uh, for all of you in the audience, leave me feedback. Because that helps me out a lot. So here we go. I have just rolled a... A one. What? I rolled a ten. Great. So... I will roll for damage. Whoa! <laughs> I'm so confused. You better hope it's all ones. <laughs> 30 damage. How many Ooh. dice is he rolling? Uh, five D6s. Five. Nice. Dude. He literally got the max. <laughs> so Vrain is dead. Uh, I have 15 oh health. So Vrain's so dead. If he rolls a third, even if he rolls a 30, I will survive by one health. So I cannot die with this roll. Okay. All right. but you're, going, you're going to be unconscious, though. I will. Yeah. Wait, I thought you boy. were. I thought. Oh wait, no, yeah, that's how attacking works. Is 
All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, nine, I... 19 points of damage. Great. Subtract Minus from your whatever. Armor. Hey, that's not too bad. I'm down to a uh, 12. Okay. One cool. more higher than my knockdown. So your boy is still standing. That is correct. Good, 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 good. All right, cool. So you do have a final movement. As this charge goes incredibly wrong, you are, <laughs> your passion, uh, your passion about this young fair maiden that you have your heart for, but this knight is still skilled as he parries around you, knocking you forward. Uh, what would you like to do with your last movement of this? Phase? I stand my ground and flex my muscles. Yeah, as you turn he around, cannot and knock me down. Your muscles, that is tinging and hitting <laughs> the armor and chainmail that is as soon as he your body. as soon as he flexes a spurt of blood comes out of his neck <laughs> oh no <laughs> i'd like some inspiration from that <laughs> oh, badass, dude. roll sanity that's really fucking cool <laughs> are you okay though like <laughs> excellent and next up sir avalok uh, you, right. you still have a knight in front of you who is parrying and striking you, but you're striking back. What would you like to do? I would like to strike at him. Excellent. Let's do it. So roll. Roll. Oh, oh, oh. Alright, you... F wait. Oh, right. So... Uh, axe is 12, I rolled a 10. Excellent. I rolled a critical success, a 17. My value was a 17. Oof. Oof. That is correct. And with that critical success, I will gain, I believe, 4d6s to my damage. Oof. Yes. Oof. Oof. Uh-oh. Let me just make sure, yes, critical success adds an additional four, plus four D6s to the damage characteristic for that round. So, Jeez. But you did succeed on your roll, so you will be able to use your armor. Oof! So I'm going to roll this real quick. Ones, ones, right, snake eyes, roll, snake eyes. Ones. Okay, so... <clears throat> A actually, question... What yes. if their total value minus your armor class ends up being a negative? Like, what if you have more armor than the damage that they can that they, than they deal? You just take no damage. Well, that's what I'm saying. Is like if your armor value is higher than the damage, I think you you don't you don't take any damage. That's what happened last time. If okay, if, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. if the damage is higher than your armor, then you subtract it from yeah. that armor. You know, be wild is like, oh yeah, you heal those extra two points. Yeah. <laughs> Your armor infuses like the nano suit to your You're like Samus. <laughs> Samus. I love I, I love him. You love Sam? <laughs> I love playing I love playing as Zelda. Yeah. Mr. Samus. Mr. Samus. Dude, the Samus is cool in that Metroid game. And the grand total. <laughs> Why can't Metroid crawl? <laughs> 31 points of damage is coming at you, Sir Avalok, as this knight brings his uh, battle axe up and is swinging it at an angle but still up coming down towards your face neck and upper chest region so uh so 31 points of damage and you'll subtract that from your armor so... right mm. okay so i'm left with 15 Fifteen, alright. Which goes to my hit points. Or, I wait, how am I reading this? Oh, I see. So, subtract the knockdown, and then it goes into the major wound, right? Correct, so... Right, so I am majorly wounded. Oh, that's worse than just wounded. That's correct. So yeah, you'd be down to 13 hit points, See? and you would have a major wound. You're not knocked down, though, which is good, but you have 13 hit points left. You do have a major wound. Is there any specific place that you would like this major wound, as you will carry this scar 
for a good while and perhaps the rest of your life. Mm. Right, let's uh, let's put the major wound in my thigh, I think. Okay. As this great war axe is coming down, your knee, your right leg is extended with your knee kind of pointing out as you are trying to parry. You are successfully able to block the axe from your face, neck, and upper chest, but as that great war axe comes down, it hits your right thigh, opening up and allowing a lot of red blood to flow out of it. Jesus, Lord! <laughs> Jesus, I've lost Lord! my inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Like it next hit. up, next up, uh, <laughs> Sir Swinhild, and I just completely forgot that uh, the Knights of Gore were also supposed to have their turn to fight, but we'll remember that in the next combat. So it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, we're all still learning. They've been doing plenty of yeah. damage, anyways. They, uh, yeah. they really have. They don't need <laughs> any other turns. Or, they're, on, so, they're on. They're on. They're on top form tonight. <laughs> they were. Uh, uh, so there's still two of them left, right? That's correct. Um. I'm going to go after the one... Is it possible for me to, to reach the one who is nearest Sir Avalok since he just got uh, his thigh cut open? Uh, Am sure. I close enough to do that? Okay. Sure, you're in between Sir Avalok and Sir Clarion. Cool. Um, I'm going to hit him with... Hit him. My, with, with, my, with my axe. Yep, we'll do my axe. Excellent. All right, let's roll. Your turn to roll. That's a 10. Which Excellent. is a success. Excellent. I get an 8, so you have the advantage. Okay. Roll damage, please. Uh, is this the first time one of us has successfully hit someone? Not my first time. Yep. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sir Swift nice. is doing the most damage <laughs> out of everybody. <laughs> She's an axe, man. It's <laughs> Simple. Uh, let's see. Five plus three, eight plus four is twelve, plus two is fourteen, plus five is nineteen. And another two. Uh, that's twenty-two points of damage. Excellent. So twenty-two. So I will take six damage. And who were you helping, Sir Avalon? The one near Sir Avalon. Excellent. And this guy is. Uh, most definitely knocked down. Actually, no, unconscious. So this guy, uh, you, you've taken the... You were using your sword, right? I, I was using my axe, but can I hit him with, like, the blunt end of the axe, like, sure. on top of the head, just, like, knock the dude out? Yeah. <laughs> just yeah, brain yeah. him. Bonk. <laughs> bonk. Yeah, so you, uh, you bonk no this horny. guy. No horny. Bonk. <laughs> and you see this guy's eyes go cross-eyed, and he tumbles over, and he has an indention in his helmet. Nice. Uh, which he was wearing. So, that guy is gone. Well, now you have to take his head. <laughs> no, he's already down. No, you have to chop off his head and take it. Is that there... would... Oh. That wouldn't be very honorable. No, that's take the way. Head. Take his head! Now, you could, you could take him as a prisoner, though. He could, he could know all about the movements. Take his and head! Everything. I'm not going to do that, but... You defeated him, you have to take his head. That is the way. I don't think that's how that... I think that's we can... exactly how that works. I don't think that's how that works. And this that's is all how that works. Yeah, so Sir Ebrain trying to make words, as he tries to speak, uh, a little bubble of blood, uh, trigger warning, uh, begins to pour out of his mouth. <laughs> uh, Sir Swinhild, is there any movement you would like to make for your final portion of this phase mm, uh no i i guess the only thing i want to do is like i i'm not going to chop the dude's head off he's 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 out boo boo listen somebody has to do that <laughs> it's more fun if i'm not bloodthirsty um, Chris, why do you have bubbles on your desk sir clarion oh i got it at a wedding oh that's yeah. Safe. Sir Clarion is Take his hand! your move. You have your mace drawn and you're battling with this Knight of Gore. The last one left as all of your other comrades have taken care of the knights in front of them and tried to help you. What would you like to do? Well, I sure hope I do some cool shit. 
So my value is 10, and I'm going to roll to beat that. Here we go. I rolled a natural 20. Yeah. <laughs> that is a fumble, a spectacular uh, oh. <laughs> fa failure. Uh, all right, so... Um, <clears throat> <laughs> Sir Butterfingers over here. Once again, I, I believe you weapon. did this in the last episode, which is yeah. why you dropped your sword. Yeah. Uh, so a spectacular <laughs> failure. Uh, regardless of the opponent's result in combat, your weapon is dropped or broken. Once again, I will say that your mace <laughs> is Sir not, Clarified Butter is knocked <laughs> out of your hands. Uh, perhaps it's the the night sky. Uh, you're really not used to fighting at night. This is kind of no. A new thing there's for no you. excuse. He uh, <laughs> he just he is on and off night. And and this uh, uh, night of gore is able to disarm you once again. And you you hear him kind of laugh. Ah. And... <laughs> this man drank too much ale before we came out here. Okay, that chicken so... was greasy. And, my and usually it'd be the knight of gore's turn after you sir clarion but since i have not done that um for this pass uh combat phase uh for this past combat round i'm, I'm just gonna stick with that and not do it we'll have, we'll save it for in a little bit uh but sir clarion would you like to make one movement or anything before we continue um just gonna stay put i still got my armor Okay. So, uh, yeah. Excellent. Sir Everett. Throw your Clearly armor that, at him. that helps, according to Sir Everett. <laughs> Throw your armor at him. That is true. Uh, Sir Everett, what would you, what would you <laughs> like to do? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stab him. I'm going to swing my sword at him again. Okay. <laughs> Go for glory. What are, what are your hit points? Uh, I'm at 12. Excellent. It's like Donald Duck. <laughs> no. All right. Now he's, swing, uh, now he's swinging like they do in Monty Python. Those like lazy ass swings. Yeah. Where their arm doesn't work well. All right. And, I want you to roll first. All of you, you are can. ganging up on this knight, and this knight is kind of parrying around like Sir Arthur Dane in mm. uh, uh, Game of Thrones. The, the Sword of the Morning? The Sword of the Morning, correct. Huh? Perhaps this guy has two swords and he's just dual wielding. Ooh. Oh man, General oh. Grievous, but medieval. <coughs> he has four arms. All right, what are we rolling? <laughs> All right, so you're gonna roll your uh, attack value or your sword value, which you have a twenty-five. I do. Uh, and I got a sixteen. What did you get? Uh, that is a five. So you had a success. Uh, which I still think that's wrong, which I'm, I'm going to make it up to you in a little bit. But uh, I still do damage in a way <laughs> which I don't like doing this. Amazing that say <laughs> like me. <laughs> All right, it's twenty five points of damage. Jesus! All right. Uh, Wait, on. hang on. I got, hold on, I got some math right now. Yeah. What is your armor? I think it's fifteen, isn't it? Sixteen. So 16. Nine, nine points of damage. So oh, I have three God. health remaining. So You're I'm unconscious, oh, dude. God. On so, death's door. Yes. Knock, knock, knock. You out. are knocked Hell out, Sir out. Brain. Uh, the blade, or I... yes, this this uh, knight's blade. It doesn't hit you with the edge of the sword, but it hits you with the uh, the blade itself, the flat portion. But it hits you on the side of the head, knocking you unconscious as you fall back into the grass, the, in, into this uh, wet soil. With your blood, because it's fucking everywhere. You begin to dream, and uh, <laughs> in a little bit, I, I want you to describe the dream that you're having after oh, we get out of combat. But you are dreaming now, as Sir Avalok. Is there anything you can do to help Sir Everain as you see your fellow knight fall back, losing all consciousness? You don't know whether or not he's dead or alive because it is pretty dark out here. Sir <laughs> Avalok, are you going to come to Sir Everain's? Uh, help. So I, since uh, 
so Swinheld mm-hmm. just sort of saved me. Um, I'm going to say, so Swinheld, let's go. And I'm going to start limping over to... <laughs> That's right, because you've also uh, suffered a major wound. Right. Because I have suffered the wound uh, to Sir Everin. My current plan at the moment is to get Sir Everin back on a horse and me and him go riding back to camp and get healed up. While these two uh, could stay here, scout, whatever they want. So you're trying to get Sir Everin to move his body back through the forest, back to the the horses. Right, I'm going to take him back since I've also been wounded heavily. Take him back to the camp with me. Alright, so for that to happen, your movement uh, will, will, will take a full round. Right. So, alright, so I'll allow that. As you move to Sir Everain to grab him, you get over there as you put your arms underneath his his arms and you start to drag him um next up sir swinhild would you like to do anything uh to perhaps save your fellow companions well uh i'm going to there's still one guy left right that is correct and and so far you've Uh, had the best dice rolls yeah (laughs) it's so i'm i'm waiting for a spectacular failure to happen is what it is uh yeah i'm gonna attack the last guy that taken care of Screw it. I'm gonna attack the last guy. Okay. Um, and as I'm moving towards him, can I like try and kick uh, the either the mace or the sword closer to Sir Clarion? Um, sure. I'll, 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 I will allow that. All right. Cool. It'll stay. It'll oh, still take one it. round uh, for him to pick up his weapons, though. All right. And as I'm as I'm walking for the guy, I'm just go. All right. Four for four. And I attack him with my axe. Okay. I'm like and Wendy's. I, I rolled a four. That's a ten. And you hit, of course. I will take damage, the fuck, man? but I will be able to use my armor. Cool. I'll roll that damage. Okay. Uh, eleven. So that's a six and a five. So eleven. Three for fourteen. Four for eighteen. Another four for twenty-two, and then I get two more d sixes because it's seven d six because the great axe is broken. Mm. Uh, 22 plus 26 plus 6 is 28 plus 3 is 31. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> How do you carry the 3? We're going to... Divide. I am actually using six. a calculator. Thank you very and then, much. Oh my <laughs> Excuse me, real quick, while I do some accounting. <laughs> um, yeah. So you are able to cause a major wound, and you're able to knock back this knight of gore, uh, taking his breath away as he takes uh, thirteen. Or yeah, well he's down to thirteen hit points now. Okay. So you've uh, I'll, I'll uh, let you describe what blow you land to this knight as he stumbles back. Oh, he said I'm I'm knocking him back. So like, I kind of want to, you know, I'm using an axe, so it has to make sense. Uh, you can do a lot with an axe. You can do a lot with that. I I kind of go like straight for the chest. And maybe it doesn't, like, quite go into his armor that much, but it does, like, enough to, like, knock him back. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, it's just a solid, like, right in, right in the... There you go. Yeah. So it doesn't break his chest plate and the chain mail underneath, but it yeah. takes the breath away. That shit's got him. a dent. Take my breath yeah. away. Way. Excellent. Uh, Top Gun 2. Uh, Sir Clarion. Oh, uh, Sir Swinhill, was there any movement you would like to make for your final nope. portion Nope. Just gonna Stand your close in on him. Excellent. Okay, closing in on him, all right? Yeah. Um, excellent. And perhaps maybe you're even standing in, like, this wide kind of heroic stance as Sir yes. Adelok and Sir Everain are trying to move past, you know, this area, trying to get Sir Everain to uh, a safe, or to a safe distance from this area. Mm. Sir Clarion, what would you like to do? You have been disarmed. You do not have your mace or your sword there in the, gr- or <laughs> they're laying on the grassy ground. What would you like to do? 
sword and mace both disarmed from me, but uh, Clarion looks him in the eye after he takes that blow and says, No worries. Whing! And whips out his dagger from the back of his belt here. Here we go. Oh, Lord have mercy. All right. All right. <laughs> Gotta beat a 10, similar to the mace. <laughs> Just whip it out once. <laughs> okay. All right. I rolled a 11. Woo. Excellent. You get the jump on me. I did have a success, so I will be able to use the armor, but you're able to uh, pounce on this knight of gore who is taking a... No. Uh, what? Nope. My value is 10. Oh, it's a 10. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, no, I was sarcastic. Woo, I fucking missed again. So that is a... At least you didn't drop it. That's, That's right. true. That's true. I didn't drop it. You just suffer damage. Can't use your armor, though. Wait, what? You won't be able to use your armor. Oh, shit. Because it was a uh, failure on your part, but a success on mine. Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh-oh. Well. <sighs> Hope it's not all sixes. Me too. It's all sixes. No. <laughs> <laughs> Lady Luck hates your gut. Uh, <laughs> Let's see it. Let's see. Yeah, well, someone does. Disarm twice and... <clears throat> 24 damage. <laughs> wow, this I did not think this was gonna be that short. I, did I, I really didn't think these guys were gonna be that OP. I still feel like Sir Every, I did you dirty and uh we're gonna get you out of there okay, but Sir Clarion the you, saddest thing about Sir Embrain multiple... is he succeeded every role. It's just you just happened to do better right. every time. Exactly, exactly. Sir Clarion, Wait, what's though, the, has what's had the multiple reason? chances and has had butterfingers. <laughs> yes. What's the reason I can't use my armor again? <laughs> uh, Did you fail to roll? It, it is a, a loss. So a failure yeah. while the opponent succeeds. So since you got an 11 and your value is a 10, you failed. So it's right. a regular failure. So it's a loss. So a failure while the opponent is, succeeds. In combat, this means you are hit and suffered damage. Now, if this was a partial success, you if you had gotten a, let's say, a 9 or an 8, you know, that would be a success for you. But I also succeeded. And I got, let's say, a 10. Okay? So you had the lower final dice roll than me. And um, in combat, you were hit and suffered damage, but you may gain protection from a shield or your weapon or your armor. Okay, so you said 24 points of damage. Oh, boy. I believe I'm doing that correctly. If not, please let me know. Well, um, I felt... I, I felt it. Um, <laughs> I believe I'm knocked down with a major wound, I think. And okay. probably unconscious as well. How many, uh, how many hit points did you have? Last I have a... Now, I didn't track last game if I took any. I don't recall taking any. I you didn't. I don't think me, um, and, me and Everett did last game, but you didn't. Yeah, uh, so my HP total is 29, so it leaves me with 5 HP. So... Okay. So yeah, you would take a major wound, you've been knocked down... And you're unconscious. So why is it? Why is that rain gurgling like? <laughs> as you are also hit in the head with uh, the blade of this. I I'm sorry. There's a lot going out on outside. We get dogs yeah, barking, sirens going. Thank you for adding Dude, to the ambience. Huddy's moved to New York. Just you say crazy. ambience. Hudson about to get raided. <laughs> ambiance, amb ambulance. Get down. Ambulance. All right. Um. Sir Clarion, you had this blade, not the edge of the blade, but just the flat portion of the blade come and hit you just like Sir Everain, hitting you across the head, knocking you out. You do take, you do, you do take some, um, they, they, you do I'm sure take, that blade would come down and cut me good at, tw at 5 HP left. Well, you take a major wound Shit. and concussion to your head, and you, you're drawing quite a lot of blood that that is coming out of your fore or temple area on the left side of your head 
as you fall to the ground also. Sir Abelok, you perhaps see Sir Clarion um, laying on the ground. <clears throat> so, Sir Everain and Sir Clarion are knocked out by this one knight of gore. Sir Avalok, you are carrying Sir Everain. Is there anything you wish to do, or do you wish to continue with Sir Everain? I am trying to go back to the horses, wherever we left them. Excellent. Um, as you continue to pull Sir Everain, you will be out of combat, and it will just be left with Sir Swinhild. Sir Swinhild, you're the last... Of your comrades in this area, besides Sir Clarion, who is unconscious, what would you like to do? You've been very heroic tonight, very valiant and glorious in defeating many of these knights of gore. You have one final knight who is dual-wielding these two uh, half-handed swords, and he kind of, you see his uh, teeth under his visor, his helmet, you see him kind of smirk at you, and then you hear him go, all right, bring it on. Last one standing. Kind of, you know, crick my neck a little mm. bit. Mm. Uh, I would like to invoke a passion, please. Oh, yes, you may. Um, I would like to invoke my passion of honor, my honor passion. Okay, so roll the honor passion That's a quick. 15. 15, so you got to get a 15. That would lower. be a 13. Excellent. So you had a success, which nice. I believe is you are inspired so you get a temporary plus five bonus to a single skill or trait yeah Chosen nice. by and you. before before i attack since i did do the honor passion mm -hmm. i just want to look at him and go i'm going to give you the chance to surrender oh oh okay okay um let me but see but if you don't and i understand if your honor compels you to fight i will meet you I'm sorry, I'm looking to see if there's any role that I would need to make. Um, I don't have his honor points or any other traits that I would need to make. Um, honor compels me to fight for King Urien's. So, seeing that you lot stumbled upon our beautiful campsite and were taking down our beautifully crafted stakes that we just put up a couple of days ago. A lot of craftsmanship in those stakes. Yes, yes. I built a couple of them myself. It's hard work, would work. It really is. And yep. I hate to see them fall down. I understand. So, no, I get it. And I hate to see your fellow brothers fall down as well. But... Mm. As a knight, I must carry on my vows and duties, and I swore my vows to King Urien's. So, have at thee. And I swore my vows to King Arthur. And I, I give him a little bit of a, a little bit of a bow. And he like crosses his swords and also bows. All right. And then takes... I'll go at, I'm gonna go at him with my axe. Okay. And he takes an Obi Wan Kenobi stance. Good. 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 <laughs> So how does the so the passion makes it higher for me to I get a plus five, is yeah, that what it so is? So you'll add that plus five to your uh That makes it a twenty. Okay, so that's a twenty. Which I believe, like with Sir Everain, you you automatically are gonna get a success no matter what. It's just uh, a question of how good of a success. Right, right. Okay. Uh but I I, I know there's gotta be something that also boosts your die amount so like if it's a 20 you add that plus five to that dice amount that you're rolling okay so like if you rolled a nine you add nine plus five so it'd be know? a 14 right okay right cool, cool, cool. I, all right I, but but let's not do that tonight i want to read into it a little bit more but sure. I, i'm pretty sure that's how it is all right i will Maybe roll all right that's a that's a one no worries i fumbled Oh. Ooh. As you strike down, uh, breaking this knight's sword. Uh, yeah. So let's see real quick. Um, 
Bryce can't lose tonight. Mm -mm. It, it had to happen at some point. And that just means next time, whenever I play, I'm going to just roll like shit. So yeah, like, uh, please roll damage as you come down with your great axes as this knight is using both swords to try okay. and block. As your, as your axe comes through the blades of these swords coming down at this knight. All right, so that's a two and another two. So that's four plus five, that's nine. Plus another five, that's 14, plus six, that's 20, and I get two more D6s because the Great Axe is busted, and they probably should fix that. Mm. But we're in the playtest phase, baby. Yes, we are. So that's, we're at 20, uh, that's going to be 29 points of damage. I got a three and a six. Um, I'm going to say how, uh, well, show me. How do you evaporate this guy? <laughs> 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 Heal! Okay. <laughs> Please describe to us in the audience how do you evaporate this guy? Um, you know what? We're just gonna keep it, keep it just nice, clean. Okay. Chop off the head. Yeah! Just... <clears throat> and the heads continue to roll as this. It kind of uh, looks like when Jon Snow defeated that White Walker in uh at the end of like Hard Home. You know, where he just like Gah! and like they burst. You know, burst. Out. You know what I'm talking right. about? Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Like that. You know what I'm talking about? So this guy burst into glass, or ice, yes. something. We were never, ice glass. We were never told what it was. Um, but yes, as this knight's head, who you were just speaking to, is just rolling on the grassy knoll. <laughs> well, not the grassy that, knoll. Not that grassy knoll. <laughs> oh, uh, okay. <laughs> sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> trigger warning. As <laughs> this knight... Spoiler alerts for the JFK assassination. Right, right. Uh, as this knight uh, falls over, you are out of combat. You have taken care of the left flank and the stakes that were guarding it. You are able to pick up Sir Clarion if you wish. Yes. Okay. Um, if you would, would it be... uh... there's still that one dude who's knocked out though, right? Uh, he is knocked out. Would it be possible for me to, like, take Claron with me to my horse and put him on... Uh, and, and can I, can I, actually, can I, try and, can I try and wake him up once we get to the horses? Um, you, you can. Um, there's... I don't think any rules <laughs> on trying to get him to wake up. Um, Morning, Chrissy. So, here. I, I, Chrissy, I, wake up! I got an idea. So, um... It says you can if you perform a uh, first aid roll on yourself, it's a min minus ten modifier. Can I? What if I do one on another person? Let, let's not say that you do it almost like a squire, and that will wake him up if you get him to the horse. Well, because what I'm trying to do is I want to try and get him good enough where he could ride his own horseback, mm -hmm. and then I want to try to go back and hog tie the guy that's knocked out and bring him back bring with him. us so we can question him. Excellent. If that um, makes sense. So real quick. Because you're carrying Sir Clarion and Sir Avalok, uh, Sir Avalok is carrying Sir Everain. Mm -hmm. Sir Swinhild and Sir Avalok, if you would both please give me strength rolls. Strength. Right. <laughs> Where's uh, oh, strength at the top? Okay. Mm -hmm. And these are unopposed. That would be a fifth. Uh, that would be a my strength is fifteen. I got a fourteen. Fourteen. So a success. Excellent. Um, you're able oh. to pick up Sir Clarion with ease, and you're able to carry him back to your horses. Sir Abelok, how are you looking? Right, I rolled a 16, and my strength is 12. Okay. So you you drop Sir Everain. Uh, <coughs> my leg hurts. You drop Sir Everain. I don't want him to take any damage. Um... <laughs> just fucking kill him. How, how many? How many? Uh, I how, wanna die. how many hit points do you have, Sir Every? Three. Take take one point of damage. <laughs> Put me out of my misery. As Sir Ablock <laughs> trips over a rock, it's like an anime dude with a nosebleed. <laughs> this is cruel and unusual punishment right now. That's fucking funny. You you fall and a rock kind of hits your, uh, I believe I said the left shoulder, your left shoulder where you've taken the wound uh, prior during this battle. 
you're still unconscious, but in your dream, which please describe to us what kind of dream you're having as you, in this dream, notice a sharp pain engulf your body. Well, so like, <laughs> what? <laughs> I was making love to my woman. <laughs> I was thinking back that the dream would definitely have to happen of a little over a year ago in Londinium. The first time I laid eyes on on a Lady Morcot of the White Tower is after a jousting tournament, which I won. Yeah. I got off my horse, glistening in sweat, muscles bulging. And I saw her <laughs> in the stand and I was like, sub babe, how you do? Did uh did you ask for her hand or anything or or did you, did you ask for her favor? I did ask for her favor. So she okay, so she gave you her favor uh before and you succeeded. Correct. Um, did you take her to court at all? We, hey yo, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 not, nothing like that. We just hung out all day. Oh, okay. and it was great. So, Saw the town. Netflix and chill, medieval. We Netflix and chilled all day. <laughs> Jester and chill. Yeah. <laughs> and it was delightful. Excellent. We saw the town. We ate some food. And then, like, you know. He just actively muted himself halfway through his statement. That's how much pain he's in. I, I didn't want us to get uh, banned on Twitch. Right. Oh, oh I see. Voice. It was a bit, <laughs> and I'm an idiot. God damn, that's good. That's Gotta, good. Commit. Gotta commit to the bit. Yeah, but then when the sharp point I got dropped, it just completely woke me up from my dream, and I just read how much pain I was in. Uh, you're still dreaming. Um, you're still oh, still dreaming? Great. You do take that damage, and as you're dreaming <laughs> about Lady Morcada, you notice that the knight of gore who knocked you out is now dancing with your lady in the court as you are off in the distance being <laughs> held back by other knights of gore, unable to get to her. You're trying desperately as a wave of knights is pushing you back, and you are unable to get to your fair maiden. Darkness consumes you. Oh. And darkness consumes the screen. But, Sir Avalok, you're able to regain your footing and pick up Sir Evrain. Sir Swinhild and Sir Clarion, you make it back to your horses with Sir Avalok and Sir Evrain. If Sir Avalok or Sir Swinhild would like to do any first aid rolls on your fellow knights who are unconscious, you may, and that will bring them back up to their uh, current, or they it would, it would wake them back up. He's bleeding. Sir Swinhild, do you, do you have a fire, a torch, something? It's kind of hard to reach a torch. I got a man on my back, but uh, place him here. Place him here. Check the check the. Yeah, should be some in my saddlebag. We need to start a fire. I'm gonna check the saddlebag. Start a fire. I'm gonna do the do the burn the wounds thing to whatever. It's and I, I take my horse back to go get the uh, the knocked out guy. Okay. And hog tie him. All right. And so as Sir Avalok is creating a fire be able to dress the wounds of Sir Ebrain and Sir Clarion. Sir Swinhild, once you return back to your horse's saddle, um, if you'll give me a horsemanship roll, please. As you mount your trusty steed, um, I think Pringles was the name? Sprinkles? Sir Sprinkles? How's everybody Ooh. doing tonight? We're, we're doing okay. Thanks for asking. Um, so <laughs> could, I, could, I, sprinkles? could I describe how I am... Um, that was a very awkward silence. Thank you. Whose horse are we talking about? I was talking about Sir Swinhild. Uh, yeah, oh, Sir Avalon. Oh. Well, Sir Swinhild's back, and then we'll get back to you. Sir what Avalon. is your horse's name, Price? <laughs> oh, my horse's name? Charge. Because, not Charge, it was... What was the name of the horse? Someone was Charger. The Charger. That was Dame Oh, yeah, it was. It was literally, his name is literally Charger because he's a Charger horse. I thought that was Dame Tamora's horse. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah, no, that, that's Dame Tamora's. Um, Dave. Dave. 
Dave. Uh, you, you say you needed a horsemanship roll. Yes, a horsemanship roll, so you so you can get back to that. My horse that fallen knight of a... gore who has been left unconscious. My horse. Do I need to? Okay, my horsemanship is a twelve. Okay, so twelve or lower. That's a nine. Excellent. So you are successfully able to mount your trusty steed charger and ride off into the night, going back down the left flank through the forest as you come out to the field that was covered by the stakes that were put there to stop any charging from happening, but you've all successfully taken them down. As you ride up to the once battle scene where you all were just uh, a few moments ago, or probably about 15 minutes now, 20 minutes ago, you do find the unconscious Knight of Gore, which you're able to tie up if you wish. I would like to hog tie him, yes. Okay. All right. Are you going to drag them behind your horse or put them on on the put them on the back of the of the you know kind of like on Red Dead Redemption when you got to you know take a guy like that like that. Or if he drug me through the dirt through a forest, (laughs) get the fuck out of here. It's like uh, in Robin Hood and the Men of Tights when uh, the uh, sheriff of Rottingham falls over on his horse. (laughs) Yeah. And the horse starts riding off. I still think that movie poster is one of the funniest movie posters of all time where he just has five arrows knocked. Even though he only has enough room for four, he somehow has five. And <laughs> I don't know. I love that movie poster so much. Mm. I used to watch also, that Also, Dave Chappelle as Lil John. I watched that when I was five years old, and I always thought that that was the story of Robin Hood. <laughs> I thought Lady Marion wore um, a uh, a chastity belt. <laughs> All right, excellent. Thing. So you're able to hogtie this knight, and uh, you're able to put it back on your horse. Or are you riding back to the um, fire? I, uh, I'm riding back to meet Sir Avalok, and excellent. then hopefully you're get him move on to back to... Meeting. We'll hopefully get a move on back to, to Arthur. Okay, cool. Sir Avalok, um, if you would like to make first aid rolls, as you hear a dog off in the distance barking, perhaps these are search dogs, you don't know, but you want to make this quick, as uh, <laughs> Sir Everain and Sir Clarion are still unconscious. Um, Sir Clarion is dreaming uh, about a feast, perhaps. Or what were you dreaming of, Sir Clarion, as Sir Avalok is rolling to try to wake both of you up and heal both of you? Sir Clarion uh, is having quite a moment here, um, losing both weapons right before getting knocked on his on his ass. And uh, he's having a repeat of the jousting tournament where he, um, he forgave honor points for the sake of slaughtering his opponent and that replays now where he is actually the one losing and perhaps and so, you're remembering that joust and remembering how you took down that knight mm-hmm. and seeing that knight lay there bloody you see his breathing stop as you get closer to him feeling sorry for the fallen knight you trying to help him he suddenly rises His eyes are grayed. His flesh, face, everything is decaying. Half of his face is a skeleton as he reaches out to you with his deathly grip, trying to grab you and pull you closer to death. Mm. Sir Avalok, who are you rolling for first? Um, I rolled and I failed. Um... But just because I fail doesn't mean that I'm making it worse, right? It just means I didn't make it better. Right. Okay. Right. Um, I suppose I would start with uh, Evren. So, Evren. Okay. So, what I'm trying to do, and let me know, Hudson, if, if I need to stop and you, know, you don't like this, but I'm trying to cauterize the wounds. Mm-hmm. So I'm building a fire, and uh, I think what happened is I grabbed the stick from the fire too early before it got hot enough, and I I couldn't cauterize it like I 
pun intended. Like, it should be done. It should be... Uh, the fire is supposed to be a lot hotter um, than when I was able to get it. And so it didn't really work. Because I'm trying to move quickly. So it left his wound just a little... A little, like, okay. burnt, but right. not... Like, it's not... It hasn't stopped <clears throat> completely. All right, so you were unsuccessful with the right. first aid roll. Okay, cool. All right, um, and now for Sir Clarion. Right. Sir Clarion, here we go. Worse this time. Just more... It, more bad. Yeah. Yes, Ian. Uh, in reality... Um, it probably would make things worse. Uh, as both Sir Clarion and Sir Evrain, um, you are st still feeling a sharp pain course through your body as you're having these dreams. You don't know what it is because you're still unconscious. As Sir Avalok, in reality, is trying to save both of you and wake you both up. <clears throat> Alright. Sir Swinhild arrives back with a capture, a captured Knight of Gore which is also unconscious. You have Sir Clarion and Sir Everain's horses next to both of your horses. You could uh, put both Sir Clarion and Sir Everain on the back of those horses, and you would slowly have to make your way back to the camp. All right. Good. Or you can leave them there. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Ready to go back to the oh. camp. Um, if there's okay. anything, I mean, if you are having difficulty trying to figure out something, we could make a trait roll to try to figure out what you should do. Um, I or... would actually like to, to roll a trait roll because my other thought is one of us stays with both the, the knights and another one of us goes forward to try to get more help. Okay, okay. So it doesn't take as long. Excellent. Okay. Um, Sir Swinhild, uh, I, I will let you, Sir Avalok, and Sir Swinhild discuss the this this matter in front of you. So I feel like as we're actively trying to load the two beaten knights up on their horses, because they'll need to be moving forward, we ought to get out of here, uh, we could be talking, I could say, uh, should we stick together, or should one of us... Go on ahead to try to get some help. Honestly, just in case we get uh, we get ambushed, I'd rather stay together. Just make as make haste as much as we can. Uh, Troy, I don't know how much use I'd be anyway with this busted leg. Well, if you want to run on ahead, you can. But I, it's my vote. We stick together. Get there as fast as we can. Get everybody tended to and. Get him interrogated. All right, God, can I uh, can I roll to see what I choose? Uh, you may. So, um, can I get a valorous roll from you, please? There it is. Okay, I succeeded. Excellent. <clears throat> You know that Sir Clarion and Sir Everain's fate is in the hands of both you and Sir Swinhild. You are a courageous knight, a valiant knight, and you would stay there with them if needed. But you know that their wounds need tending to as you hear the dogs of death barking in the distance, gaining closer and closer, not knowing if they're looking for you or not or whether or not they're in my house. But you know that if you get them back to Arthur's camp, both Sir Everett and Sir Clarion, the squires and the medics can tend to their wounds and try to wake them up out of this deep sleep. So, what you're saying is we have to... Right, so we have to get them to the camp not bring the camp to them is what you're telling me. That is correct. Okay. Alright. Let's get on the move then. 
Sir Swellhead. What do I keep forgetting? Swinhill. Swinhill. Oh my god, why is it spelled so weird? Listen, I. <laughs> my own mother can't pronounce my name either. I don't get it. <laughs> Alright, so. You're able to put both Sir Everain and Sir Clarion on the. Okay, cool. I've got a Planet Fitness ad running and everything. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, wow, internet plus uh, barking dogs outside. Isn't it great? Dogs um, going up to the landlines. You were able to strap Sir Everain and Sir Clarion to their horses, and you are slowly making your way back to King Arthur's camp. At a snail's pace. At a snail's pace, which you were able to make it the morning of as the night sky begins to lighten itself with the sun as it rises and with that we're gonna take a quick break <laughs> and ah. let everybody go refill and use the restroom we've had a uh very very eventful start uh to this episode and i gotta figure out how we're gonna do this next portion <laughs> oh, boy. and I'm, I'm making sir clarion sleepy excellent so, yeah, everybody go sorry. get a drink, Sir Clarion coffee for you, <laughs> and uh, we'll be right back. And you got go, what is this magical elixir? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to go try Ooh, to figure coffee. out uh, what's going on outside of my window. But yes, stay tuned, and we'll be right back. We shall see you in a sec. Right. <laughs> Thank you. 
welcome back to Spot Hidden, where we are playing Pendragon the 6th edition by Chaosium. If you're just tuning in or joining us, welcome uh, Twitch and YouTube audience. I am here, of course, with my fellow knights, Trevor, Michael, Matt, and Price. We just got out of combat between some other knights, which our knights dealt a lot of damage and took a lot of damage. Two of our yes. very own knights, for both Sir Everain and Sir Clarion, have been left unconscious, but have been helped and taken back to King Arthur's camp to be revived and rehealed. Um, but yes, really, it's just some quick things to go over before we get started again. Um, it, yes, if you're just tuning in, we are playing Pendragon the Sixth Edition at this time. Uh, March 9th, 2023, 6th uh, edition, the full rule book, everything has yet to come out by Chaosium. We're just still waiting, but we do have the quick start rules, the sword of the tournament, or the, yeah, the sword tournament and the great hunt, uh, quick start rules, which are free and on Chaosium's website. So go snag those, or if they're available at your local game store, get them there, you know, support your LGSs. Can't stress that yes. enough. Buy a pack of Yu-Gi-Oh cards while you're at it. Or uh, Magic the Gathering singles. Old Magic product. Not new Magic product. New Magic, not good. Apparently. Especially, especially Magic 30. $1,000 <laughs> There's 30 for of them? No, no. Magic, oh. <laughs> Magic 30. $1, There's 30 whole cards, cards in the game, bro. <laughs> Get five cards per deck. It's great. I summon... The, the Lotus card thing that's really expensive. But, yeah, but, yeah. but seeing Magic Blue 30 eyes, product, uh, us here at Spot Dragon. Hidden on our 30th anniversary, if we ever get there, we'll come out I with hope a not. Matt Stevenson bing bag chair with all of Matt Stevenson's different faces of 30 years playing Spot Hidden. And mm -hmm. it'll cost roughly around $9,999. That's appropriate. I appreciate but that. But you save, you save 10%. And free shipping. You shipping. follow our sponsor. And by switching to Geico. Oh, no free future, ads. Future sponsor. I, yeah, I, no I saved free it ads. open for there. Cut Geico to the doesn't exist. I'll wait, I'll might be, I might be dead by then. Who knows? I hope Hopefully. not. Hopefully. You'll be left Thank unconscious. You. Oh, a major core. wound. <laughs> Excellent. I hope so, I'm not dead in 30 years. That'd, no, that'd be no, a bummer. No, none of, none of us. Hopefully. No. No, no, no. Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> He's had a bad day. <laughs> Welcome back to Spot Hidden. All right, cool. Unlucky. So... Are we all ready to jump back in? Yes. I, yes. The we silence is thunderous. I will take us back in then. Yeah. Sir Clarion and Sir yeah, Andre, yeah. Sorry. you were both <laughs> laying in these tourniquets, these beds in the medic tent. That is not filled up at all because the great battle that is about to commence has not happened yet. As you both awake out of this state of unconsciousness the darkness and fogginess is still in your eyes and in your mind but in the distance you hear king arthur's voice the young boy's voice as you hear him say merlin 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 and you hear the name merlin just grow stronger stronger and stronger and with a snap, brightness and light fills your eyes and your mind and your surroundings. It's almost like a flashbang went off. But everything becomes clearer as you're able to see the tent. You're able to see Sir Everain next to you, Sir Clarion. And Sir Everain, you're able to see Sir Clarion next to you. As a, you're able to gain consciousness and look around at the uh, the foot of the bed is the wizard Merlin sitting in a chair look, looking at both of you and just like when Frodo gains consciousness yep. and is staring at Gandalf there's like this weird kind of Oh, 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 oh. Uh, I don't get your nerd references. Can you can you redo the reference in F four to F one fifty terms, please? Gandalf. No, I... oh, oh, oh. 
I'm a I'm a, a Toyota guy. Oh, uh, that's uh, the right brand. Foreign made cars. <laughs> uh, American made cars. <laughs> uh, Get you yes. that tax credit. <laughs> Both uh, Merlin and <coughs> right next to Merlin on his left side is King Arthur. Young King Arthur next to him. Bright-eyed, seeing both of you awake. The wound in your shoulder, Sir Everain. You look to it, and you notice that the pain has dulled. It's really no longer there. There is a um, some bandages around it, but the blood has been cleared of it. And if you wish, if you do look and peel it back, your wound has been healed. Has he fixed my vocal cords? Coids. My vocal cords. As you begin to speak, you kind of sound like Cindy Lauper for some reason. <laughs> 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 very, very high pitched. You kind of sound like Cindy Lauper for some reason. Very high pitch. No. But uh, as. <laughs> Jinkies! Yeah. What happened to me? All the girls just good enough for me. <laughs> um, aye, 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 as you aye, gain aye. consciousness and you try to speak, it takes a little bit, but you do have your voice. Your throat <coughs> is fine. Hello? Your vocal cords have been returned back to themselves and a little bit better. It has cleared your vocal cords of any damage that has been done by any. Um, mead, uh, excessive amount of mead drinking, wine drinking, smoking, uh, vaping, anything like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Saw, dude. <laughs> hit, hit, getting some dabs. <laughs> yes. uh. Sir Clarion, your wounds have been healed also, especially the the blow to your uh, head, your temple. The huge dent in my forehead? Yes. Yeah, okay. Your helmet, Perfect. however, uh, is still damaged, but your head is completely fine. We enjoyed. I thought it was better than fine. Oh. oh. It was groovy-licious. It was groovy-licious. Sir Avalok. Uh, so no head. <laughs> your right thigh has also been tended to. And has been healed. You're all back up to your normal health hit points. Woo! I get those six health point hit points back. <clears throat> this Ooh, was all done. Twenty four hit points back. <laughs> this was all done in a matter of an hour. We're Damn, looking Merlin. at six a.m. now. The morning of the great battle of Carmelide. I believe that's how you pronounce it. It is time to lift the siege. As King Arthur looks to all of you, after you rest for a period, you're able to gather your equipment, gather your armor, mount your steeds, and ride with your king to death and glory. But King Arthur, before leading the army off, you are able to give him information. Did the prisoner, like the guy we int took to interrogate, did he did he give up some shit? Yes, he he did tell you that King Urien's will be there. He usually puts himself in the vanguard, in the front, the thickest part of the battle. He said that this morning, today, the siege will commence. And they are hoping that the wall or the front gate will be breached and they will have the castle by noon. There are also talks that King Urians will take the young daughter of King Leodegrance as his newly wedded wife after sacking the castle. Aww. But you're also able to tell King Arthur that you have dealt with the left flank, and if we wish to have a successful charge, we should mount it there. Um, 
my weapon, so my mace, my sword. Should I be picking out a new one? Welcome, welcome, London. Um, British. you you are able to gather new equipment. Um, so you do have a new mace and sword with you. Awesome. And anybody else who uh, took damage to weaponry or dropped their weapons, you have new versions of those weapons. All right. No upgrades, because I don't have any other stats or any new equipment. Oh, there's the dog again. Great. Can I can I put a like a plus one etched into the blade? To, to the sword? Is that an option? Yes, you put runes into it to upgrade it. <laughs> No, but yes. Fuck your sword, Arthur, if that is your name. So, uh, you are... Is there anything else you wish to do at the camp at this moment? You have been healed up. You are ready for battle. What would you like to do? Can I ask about the uh, the prisoner? See what he gave up? Sure. Was the uh, prisoner I brought home Able to help with anything with the battle planning, sir. Sir Swinhild, yes, he was. I appreciate you for your valiant deeds. All of you. It took all of us, not just not just me. Was, yes, uh, and I team effort. Yes, I understand that, and I appreciate and I value each and every one of you. And I will ride into battle with the four of you at my side, if you would allow it. Um, of course, of course. Uh, if you, um, um, you are the king. So, yes. Hey, uh, hey God. Uh, yes. Um, <laughs> would us knights be in charge of, like, squads? Oh, this dude's trying to play an RTS out here. Oh, boy. <laughs> Yes, we're we're gonna quickly uh, switch over to medieval two total war. Where are we, we dropping? Show the full <laughs> battle. <laughs> All of a sudden, is Shogun. We're playing Shogun yeah, two. We're, we're gonna do Shogun two total war, where I have eight oh, you Gatling could guns. Do a really Good luck. Cool. <laughs> you could do a really cool take on Pin Dragon though with Samurai. I just realized that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think there's oh. actually a uh, Shogun kind of. Uh, Pendragon universe that was already created. Not that'd be R really, RPG, that'd but be like rad. story kind of, you know. Okay. That'd be rad, though. <clears throat> oh, yeah. yeah. Um, but yes, uh, Sir Avalok, you would not be in charge of any squads because uh, in this kind of Arthurian universe, knights, there are a lot, a lot of knights, but you do have your squad. <coughs> I apologize for my coughing. The pollen is just everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, inside. It's in the walls. It's in the wall. You do have your squires uh, next to you, so you're in charge of the squires who are there to, you know, heal you and stuff. But no, you, you're not in charge of any squads. Oh well, not that I know of. Perhaps it's more like the fire actual emblem, rule book you know? will, you know, explain more on large charging. You know, great battles. Uh, Maybe there is a little bit more information, but I, I don't want to delve too deep on that. But you're, you know, in charge of yourself and that charge. Lead a company. That's okay. That's okay. All right. So we're gonna we're gonna get into the the battle. As you mount your steeds, you're right next to Arthur as he is the the head, the point of this army. As you begin to ride off. Into the distance, miles away, just a mile or so, a few miles. Uh, Emory! Emory sent titty scouts by the time we got back. Why do you always ask me about scouts? I just figured. Go you ask might Survey! Know. I saw you at. Oh, Survey would know. Survey would know. Survey survey would I, know. I, I, I saw you talking to Arthur earlier. And Circumspect can help you get to Survey. I'm Survey. Uh -huh. Did you say my name? I did. Oh, uh, good, 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 mor good morrow, Survey. Good morrow to you. Aye, aye, aye. Did you send a scout after us? Uh, no, you were the scouts. Oh. Yes. Well, so, Clarion, I heard that you took a massive blow to your head. No, no, not at all. <laughs> that was, uh, that, that, uh, was, uh, folklore, a tale made up, you see. A large yeah, yeah. tail, as I would say. A large tail, yes, yes. A large uh, blow to your large head. 
Well, granted, my helmet no longer fits, but that has nothing to do with my head. See, I deflected all of the incoming damage to the helmet to prevent damage to myself, because that is a good warrior's strategy. Some would say you have a hard head. Yes, exactly. See, now you understand. Thank you, Survey. Excellent. Oh. Tally-ho. Tally-ho. <laughs> <coughs> it's our loading screen. I'll tell you what, man. Survey is the funniest fucker <coughs> in this camp. He's hilarious. Survey is pretty... He's thank very you, funny. Thank you, London, for reminding me. I do need some water. I appreciate it. Um... He needs some milk. <laughs> yeah, no, not milk. Um... Yes, as you continue to ride off into the distance, as the sun begins to rise, <laughs> we fix our gazes to the castle. The camera opens up with a wide shot of a large besiegement happening to King Leodegrance's castle. The king is in his great tower, looking down upon the settlement in that tower he looks off to the distance the left flank and the right flank but back to the left flank seeing that hill as it swoops down to the clear field he notices the stakes that were put up days before have been taken down yeah and as the sun rises <laughs> he notices no help he turns around, face kind of solemn, knowing defeat is close and near, and death is at hand. He turns around and makes his way out of the room. But our camera pans past him. His daughter is in the room with him. The young Lady Guinevere looks out the window, and Fine. as the sun rises, she notices a young man dressed in heavy armor and chainmail with a white steed, heavily armored, upon the left flank hillside. The steed jumps up on both back hind legs letting out a large burst. <laughs> she calls back to her father. Father! Father! King Leodegrance comes and looks out the window and yells, My God! It's the boy king! And he's brought the army of Britain with him! And as he says that 600... Men at arms, knights, squires, and guards, including yourselves, arrive at the hillside, looking down at flames, smoke, and ash that cover the ground and this castle. The catapults are still going off, almost tearing down the wall. There is a battering ram taking toll on the front gate. And two siege towers that are trying to make their way through the moat, but are being kind of bogged down because of the water. So, with this, you do have the upper hand because you took the left flank, and the left flank has been cleared. So, your charges will be unopposed as you will breach into the enemy's left side. Yeah, uh, what's what's the uh, background music that's playing uh, during this Hudson? What we got? Um, yes, thank you for asking. So, uh, <laughs> if anybody is a fan of the Lord of the Rings, the Return yes. of the King, mm -hmm. um, this would be uh, just like the Battle of Pelennor Fields with the Charge mm -hmm. of the Rohirrim. Do -do 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 -do. Yes. Let me go ahead and play that on my end. Thank you very much. And, <laughs> and with that, uh, King Arthur is going up and down the lines. And he's rallying his knights as he says, Men, my knights, my brothers, my friends, you have sworn a vow to stand at my side, and I stand at yours as in equal. I say we liberate this great castle. Do it with me. And you shall be my knights. My knights forever. I'd like to start the chant. For King Arthur! 
And you're able to start a chant. Roll and for you awkwardness. Hear the, the 600 <laughs> men cry out, Arthur! Arthur! Roll for cringe. Arthur! <laughs> and King Urien's forces hear this as they look and are blinded by the sun as it's rising. And almost a heavenly force is on this hillside as they see it in awe. Their eyes are wide. They have been taken by surprise as a great charge has unfolded. So, let's see this. So, we're going to be ch using our charge roll. So, you're going to be using your lances for this initial charge. You are on horseback, which will <clears throat> is going to give you some advantages in a little bit. But, uh, yeah, so let's uh, get that lance charge going. And we're going to see uh, <clears throat> how much damage everybody does. Real quick, let me just make so sure. we roll the we roll the lance. Yep, lance. The lance charge value. Some made away the flag. I need a twelve. I got an eleven. <laughs> and when the well, family should be fired to the chief. Jeez. <laughs> Fool in red, white, and blue. Much better charge them. <laughs> Survey has a straight up pig. Has an M60 on his yeah, yeah. horse. <laughs> he has the, 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 the stripes. I ain't no noble man, son. Oh, oh no, Ian. Yeah. No, the, the horse is not Guinevere. No. <laughs> no I think I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no. We, we were saying Guinevere thought. So you said Guinevere was looking at the horse. And then I said, Father, look, he's so hot. Oh. Referring to Arthur, and then he thought I thought Guinevere was saying the horse was hot, and Trevor confirmed that Guinevere thought the horse was 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 hot. I did. Just for posterity's sake. Yeah, you're the yep. yeah. Trevor's uh. Maybe it was Matt. I don't remember. It was some white guy. This is one of. It was it was Matt. White, it was Matt. I'm Matt. Right. Yeah, that's Matt right there. So was everybody successful the, in the charges? Yes. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, hang on. Yes. Uh, my lance is 15, and I rolled a 14. That should do it. Success. Sir Avalok, a success. Oh, yes. Uh, 10 versus 15. Excellent. Yes. <laughs> Sir Everain, fumble. <laughs> no, success. Actually. Excellent, excellent, excellent. All right, so... He's got a mad gleam in his eye, too, the whole time he's charging. <laughs> yeah. Sir, Sir Everain's horse kicks him off and kicks him in the head, <laughs> leaving him unconscious. No. The horse tied a roll with him, which means <laughs> yeah. he immediately dies. He gets bucked off. <laughs> All right, so as the battle been cry of for Arthur is yelled and screamed out by the 600 minute arms from Great Britain, or Britain itself, uh, I guess it wouldn't be called Great Britain this time, but the 600 men that yet. were raised at Londinium. Not great yet. Well, king Arthur, the young king himself, begins to lead the charge as your horses begin to gallop and pick up pace. As you see the ground turning underneath you, as you begin to gain some momentum, as all of you have your lances upright... King Arthur holding Excalibur high Mike, in the air as the this. sun is rising. A lens flare is able to gain access to the blade <laughs> and the hilt of the sword. Reflecting off the enemy uh, knights below you, in front of you. Blinding a few of them as they see this bright sword coming down at them. As Arthur lowers the sword, all in unison, all 600 knights, squires, and guards lower their lances as a full charge hits the enemy's left flank. Sir Everain, will you roll for damage, please? Yes, I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, get 11. To, you get to roll damage, oh, wait, congratulations. Kidding. I get to roll more than a d20. <laughs> What? I thought you said yes, Daddy. It's just yes, you roll, Daddy. That's what you said. Fuck. But in this pro, Daddy. Uh, yeah. my charge is sixty-six. <laughs> Twenty-one damage. I'm a brilliant Twenty-one damage. Dun, dun, dun. Excellent. Uh. Excellent. As as you ride through the <clears throat> enemy, 
you are rushing through with your horse, galloping past and through some of these knights, damaging and killing some. You stop and pierce your lance into one of the knights, causing a lot of damage in his chest. And knocking him down to the ground. Do you wish to stay upright on your horse? Or would you like to dismount your horse and continue on foot? I stay on my horse. Excellent. So with horseback, you will gain a plus five to your skills. So let me just make sure real quick. Um, yes, if you are mounted on horseback, you receive a plus five modifier to your role if fighting uh, someone not mounted. Excellent. So you have dealt a good bit of damage to this knight in front of you as you have other knights all around you as the rest of the 600 minute arms are rushing in around you. Um, is there any movement you wish to make? I charge further into the crowd. Um, you won't be able to charge. You can move, mm. you know, uh, a little bit more into them. Uh, but at this point, it's kind of a kind of steady stagger as y'all have moved through um, a good bit of the left flank uh, portion of the enemy. And you're kind of at a stop or kind of stand still. The horses don't want to go any further. Um, you can't, you've lost the momentum to charge because of how many troops you've knocked. Damn, my horse is a bitch. Uh, <laughs> I stand my ground. All right. Excellent. And next up, Sir Abelok, uh, as you are, you know, pushing through these enemy lines, you are galloping over and watching these soldiers tumble underneath your horse as you're killing and knocking out <laughs> many of these knights of gore as all of this whole army has caught off. Uh, surprise, by surprise you also pierce one of these knights of gore with your lance please roll for damage 28 nice excellent <clears throat> and uh, with that you knock him in the head with your lance knocking him unconscious as he goes down is there any movement you wish to make uh, I'd like to drop my lance and take out my sword to use as, uh, to, to chop with my sword. Okay. While staying on horseback. All right. Excellent. So Swinhild. Yes. As I you are making yeah. your way through the ranks of the Knights of Gore, you're also noticing the stumbling and the rumbling of knight's armor underneath your horse. Rumbling! As the fields of Pel Pelennor, the Battle of Pelennor Fields, yes. is playing in the background loudly. Right. As you pierce a knight of gore's armor. Roll for damage, please. All right. And my... This is the lance charging, correct? So... That's correct. Minus 76. Four... Plus 4 is 8, plus 5 is 13, plus 6 is 19, plus 5 is 24, and I get 2 more d6, so that's mm, 24 plus 2 is 26, 27. 27. <clears throat> Excellent. <clears throat> you also knock a knight down to the ground, this knight falls back and hits his head on a nearby stone mm. or a stone underneath him, knocking him unconscious. He's stoned. He's stoned. He's been stoned. Uh, it's the worst. You, Matt, you I think cast Matt wants the first to kill stone. Me. Huh? Matt what wants to that? kill me for these bad puns. Oh, no. I, would I never... enjoy all the bad puns. Good. Okay. Good. Good. Yeah, I would, Sir I'll Swinhill. Never wait until I'm also. Spot hidden is pro pun. Well, yeah. Oh, okay. Is there any <laughs> movement you wish to make further in this phase? Uh, I just want to try to keep going as much as I can further in. Right. And as as much momentum you have left, just like Sir Eberin and Sir Avalok, you've made a good dent in the enemy lines. Uh, you're close to one of the nearby catapults as the catapults have stopped firing, as you notice. 
and a lot of the knights, <coughs> a lot of your knights and a lot of the knights nearby that are enemies are engaging everybody. Uh, Sir Clarion, you are just like your fellow brothers, your fellow knights are charging into battle also as you are able to gain a lot of momentum and charge through the enemy ranks, smashing and hearing the clanking sound of metal and chain mail rattle through the air. You see swords and spears flying in front of you and past you as you make a dent in the enemy lines. Please roll for damage as your lance hits an enemy knight. Yeah. Uh, you hear the thumping of my horse hooves. Not mine, but my horse's hooves. And I find an opening for... You're a centaur. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, Narnia. <laughs> for, for 21 it's damage. It's for Renzi. For 21 yeah. damage? 21. Okay, excellent. Oh, Narnia! Um, so I'll take over as Game Master now. Oh, there he is. Oh, oh okay. So, sorry. and then, after that... Okay. Uh, cool, so... Oh, okay. <laughs> sorry. You knock down this knight as your horse comes to a standstill, as there are other knights of gore around you, but you knock this knight of gore down to the ground with your lance. But he is still conscious and is able to get up. So, mm. <clears throat> we are going to move on to the Knights of Gore's turn, which I will not forget this time. So, the first one up is the one that Sir Everain knocked down. Um, I believe because he is knocked down, he must take a turn to get up. If I'm mistaken, please leave feedback. So, he's going to take that turn to get up and gather himself to attack Sir Everain. Then, next up, we have a Knight of Gore that will be attacking Sir Avalok. He is dismounted uh, and on foot. Sir Avalok, you are still on foot, correct? Or on, on horseback? I'm on horseback. Excellent. So you will have a plus five modifier to your roll. These will be opposed rolls now. So, let's roll. Okay, I got a nine. Sir Avalok, what did you get? Me? Yes. Okay. These are, I, these are going to be opposed roles because now you are fighting. Uh, the enemy is aware of who you are and how many you are and stuff. So you, you are engaging an enemy now. You don't have I thought. Surprise. Sorry, I thought we were going to... My bad. No, no you're good. Six. You're good. I rolled a six. A six. Okay. So, is that with the plus five? Oh, not with the plus five. Excellent. So, the plus five, you get an 11. Excellent. So, you you do damage. Please roll damage, and I will be able to use armor, though. That's with my sword. It's 46. It's a 10. Excellent. Plus the five, which is a 15. Well, no, the, the plus no. five. Yeah, the plus five will be added to your your initial strike or the the initial roll the value to see if you hit uh i'm just testing you yes thank you so yep. 10 10 points of damage 10 points okay so i won't take any damage because my armor rating is 14 excellent all right and next up sir swinhild you are still mounted on your trusty steed, Charlie. Yes, sir. And you have a knight of gore. You, he has seen his fallen Conrad that you have taken down. And this other knight of gore rushes past and with his sword and is striking you. Okay. And so this will be an opposed roll. So if you roll, right. uh, but because you are mounted, you get a plus five to your roll. Oh, what am I trying to roll against? Like, what am I trying to hit? So you're gonna do use your sword at this point. Um, sword, or, okay. Yeah, I mean, if cool. you, if you wish to use your lance, you can. Uh, I have a yeah, I have an arming sword. So okay. So I got a six. I also got a six. Wow. Okay. All right. So that's a tie. Um, let me. Read that means Huddy wins. 
New rule, price, new rule. Price that means that I win, tired. and then Sir Evrain evaporates. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> He's not even there. He just died. <laughs> Finally. Thank you for joining us, Michael. <laughs> no, a tie. Michael's is last a... appearance on Spot Hidden. Yeah. <laughs> Thank fucking God. <laughs> 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 no, not really. All right, so, <laughs> um, so a tie is a success for both opponents that is exactly the same final dice roll, or both roll a critical <laughs> success. This situation is unresolved for the moment, but an, an additional effect such as damage or weapon breakage may be triggered. Um, I, I don't. I don't. There's no reason for that. Uh, perhaps you are both locked in melee and you're okay. pairing each other very well um you there's just no way for me or you to get a strike on the other so it's, it's literally we, we're, we're literally tied yes like okay yeah. cool yeah so you're both just you know blocking and yeah. pairing each other's blows and you cool. you know you have height advantage so you're just like swinging like this you know mm -hmm. so stuff like that cool um is there any movement you'd like to make I just, I want to, he, he, he's engaged me, so I'm, I'm staying, I'm sticking with him. I wish there was a way you could just, like, use your horse to just, like, hoof kick a guy. Yeah, he's on the ground, right? So. Right. I wish you could just be like, yeah, I'm yeah. going to turn my horse's back to him, just back kick him. <laughs> <laughs> um, like what happened to Paul Blart <laughs> and Paul Blart Markov, too. What a, what a, I, I love the first one. What a great The movie. feature film. The second one is not as good as the first one, but the last scene of it where Paul Blart gets kicked by a horse is probably one of the funniest things I've ever seen. And it shouldn't be, but it's just really funny to see Kevin James get kicked by a horse, like, off screen. Like, he's in the middle of the screen, gets kicked by a horse, flies off screen. It's great. Sir Swinhill, is there any <coughs> any movement? My apologies, guys. Is there no, any I'm just, I'm sticking with him. <clears throat> I'm sticking with him. All right, cool. Uh, Sir Clarion. You have yes. uh, successfully knocked down one of the one of these knights, but he is still moving. Uh, he will take his whole turn to try to regain his footing, just like okay. the knight that Sir Everain is with. So back to it, uh, Sir Everain. You have the lead. What would you like to do? Uh, I homie's on the ground, right? Well, he's he's actually standing up now, right? Um, he's like halfway standing up, so you still. Cool. I'm gonna put his ass back on the ground. Okay. Is this a contested roll? Uh, because he is on the ground halfway, it's still unopposed. The only ones that are nice. opposed are with Sir Avalok and Sir Swinhild because they were successfully able to take out their first targets. So that when it came around to me, a... could I not jab him with the lance again? Or yeah, you would be able to. <laughs> So I don't need to roll for success. I can just go ahead and roll my d6s. Well, we just we just skipped right over me, motherfucker. What are, hey, can I shank him? What are, oh my gosh, did, did I just skip over you? We just went right past Oh, oh my gosh, I knew I was missing something. I was like, I was like you're like, right yeah, he's, like I... he's, he's using his turn to stand up. So, Sir Everett, <laughs> you're just watching him. You're just making sure he's doing all right, you know. Oh, did I hurt you? Sorry, here, let me help you out a little bit. I feel bad. I, I've hurt Michael's character so much this, yeah. this whole episode, this whole two weeks. I really want to make it up to him. I'm so sorry, Matt. Hey, man, he uh, he got beat up, but I got, like, just one tapped. That is true. About. All right. So, so, here we uh, go. Here we go. I'm so sorry, Sir Clarion. That, that's weird. <laughs> that's um, fucking so funny. You, that's right you have successfully landed a lance, you know. No, no, I haven't, I haven't landed it yet. I got to roll for it. I just, I imagine, is it unopposed, or... Wait, no, hold on, wait, Matt. Hang on. Hold on. Because I downed him on the initial charge. Did you charge. skip Matt twice? No, I didn't skip Matt <laughs> twice. No, no, Matt, didn't. you didn't. You, okay, hold on. Now, yeah, now you're right. messing with me. You're no, messing explain with it me. to me, explain it all to right, me. All right, so, <clears throat> I'm in the phase of the Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift off yep, the best one side. I okay. wonder if yeah. you know, how are we doing, Tokyo? One. That's yeah, five. Wait, that's no. pretty good. Tokyo Drift. I think Tokyo <laughs> Drift is the <laughs> only one I ever saw. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, it's my first. It was my first Fast Furious movie right, too. So I'm in the the phase of the, the soundtrack of gore. So the knight that was attacking you, or you were attacking, yeah. he's on the ground. So he's taking his full round to gain his footing. 
you oh, already okay. you've already used your round to knock him down. We're, so we're, we're going back even... to the players. Okay. Yes, yeah, we're yeah, back I see, to the I players. See, I see. Yes. I'm sorry. Understood. I I was like, what happened? Did I just black well, I got out confused or too. I I was I, I yeah yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. So Sir Everain, um, we're back to you. You do have a knight of gore that is kind of halfway getting and back I up. Don't need to re ro roll a d fuck. I don't need to roll a d twenty. I can just go ahead and roll damage. Correct. That is correct. Sweet. Well, well, hold, hold on. No, 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 no. Uh, that you had the initial charge. You need to roll your uh, either lance or sword value, but you do get a plus five modifier. Oh shit! Uh, let me reroll. I rolled a fourteen versus my lance of fifteen. Nice. Yeah, so would you add 5 to that if he's getting a plus 5? It means five? he could roll up to a 19 and still succeed, I think. But I succeeded regardless. I see. Okay, got it. Right. Got it. Yeah. It may, I, think uh, it may, I think it makes the limit you could roll to 5. He could, he could roll to a 20 then. Right. Because he's... Right. Yeah, all right. Right. Yeah. Uh, 24 damage. 24 damage. Excellent. Uh, how do you kill this Knight of Gore? Uh, He's like halfway standing up, right? Yes. He's kind of like I'm gonna himself like... In the heat of battle, I'm gonna sit up straight on my horse and scream really, really ah! Yeah, and then, like scream so loud, my adrenaline's pumping. My hair is gonna get a little bit spiky, and then I'm gonna yell the name of my attack: Thunder Slash. Uh, slap, swing is. my sword really fast, <laughs> and then sheath it immediately. He does some hand signs be, beforehand. Like yeah, there'll be a good like three <laughs> second pause where the guy's wondering why I yelled, and then he's gonna split in half. There it is. Just straight, straight in half. Is this like an Avatar The Last Airbender kind of reference? I like that. Uh, exactly what it is, yeah. I think it I does the, uh... and, and strangely yeah. enough, this, this happens where you just obliterate this enemy. Um, not cutting through his armor, but th this... <clears throat> Blue bird guard <laughs> or squire man at arms is is not really heavily armored he does have some kind of leather uh, leather tunic um a cloth kind of armor so you're able to cut through this guy splitting him in half with your very large sword nice is there any movement you would like to make uh my horse can't go any further correct uh, that is correct. I will get off of my horse. Okay. If that's allowed. Dismount. Excellent. I dismount and then I charge ahead on foot. Okay. And you will lose that plus five modifier. Fuck, I don't need it. Excellent. I like the courageousness and uh <laughs> Valorousness. Yeah, the valor the valorance I see in front of me. Uh King Arthur would see it as well. Uh, and so nice. perhaps there will be some rewards for that. Sir Kiss Avalon, ass. I don't need us. Can we get a seat at the uh, uh, maybe a table that's a bit? Uh, well, there has to be a marriage first for oh, the yeah. table to be present. Cool. Circumference is table, you mean? I know that I, I had to catch myself earlier. If you saw me when I was doing the speech of King Arthur, I was about to say knights of the something, but I was like, I have to think of something else. <laughs> knights of. <laughs> My knights. My <laughs> It'll just be my knights. knights You're my knights. Knight. My knights of the night. Guys, I'm um, putting together a really fucking cool table, though. Yeah. <laughs> we, we need a table. We can play D&D &D on the table. You can circumference. Play D &D. What a gr uh, This table I've never seen before. I chopped out a really big tree, and I'm rounding <laughs> it up. Um, are, we, are we okay on time? Is everybody good? Nobody needs to... I'm good. Everybody, 9.15? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm good to go. Sir Avalok, are you okay? Good. All right, all right, messing with me. All right, Sir Avalok, it is your <laughs> it, it is your turn. So you have a fresh knight of gore in front of you as he is fighting with you. What would you like to do? I'm gonna take another swing. Excellent. And this will be an opposed roll. What uh oh failure on my Zoinks. Part. Okay, um I got the plus five, so I have a six. Excellent. So, roll for damage. Well, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. No, 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 Matt, no, no, no. Okay. Uh, Wait, what, 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 what's happening? Is there foul I'm play? I'm not saying nothing. No, it's, he's doing a great job. Yeah, I tiger. made it, I rolled a six because of my plus five. Do I need to look on roll 20? I've been trying not <laughs> to look on roll 20. 
No, 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 I'm not lying. I wouldn't lie. I'm not a He's lie. Lying. He's lying. Yeah, plus five is six. Yeah. Well, so I thought we're... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but but the, the thing is, it's a one, so it's fine. It's a success. Anyway, 17 damage. Yeah, we add the five to the... Uh, yeah, we, whatever, add the fi we add the five to the value. And, but he's still got a one, so it's a, a regular success. So 17 damage. Excellent. Zah! Hudson, you good? Yeah, I was uh, calculating on my calculator. Hey, you disappeared on the camera. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so... He is down to 13 hit points as you knock this Knight of Gore back. Are you using your sword or lance? My sword. I dropped my lance. Yeah, I hope that the lance is still sticking in the person that I originally took down. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we can allow that. It's like standing up. Yeah. Yeah, it's upright. You know, the sun is uh, creating a lens flare off the metal kind of mm -hmm. hilt Very portion. Solid. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And you have a height advantage over this night. Directed by J.J. As Abrams. you land a swift and heavy blow down to him, knocking him off his feet as he goes <clears throat> down in the heavy, thick mud uh, that they've created because of this besiegement. Is there any other movement you wish to make? Big brain time. I'm on a <laughs> horse. He's in the mud. Can I move on top of him? Uh -oh. See, See, that's the thing. Like I don't, I don't want to create rules because there's no trampling. I, I know. I wish there was. There, there, there should has be, to be some like mechanic, and I, I really hope we can see something like that. You know, with a charge, there's a trampling mechanic or something like that. Um, but I don't want to create something that's not supposed to be there because I also want this to be a learning experience for all of us and the viewers. Yeah. So I'm trying my best not to make something that's not there no um, the answer is no because my horse unless it's against me mm -hmm. unless right. it's against sir everain so sir everain if if you fall off your horse your horse He's getting will automatically stomp. knock you out and you will go yeah. into a dream state again a curve will spawn <laughs> and he will then get stomped into said curb i was gonna send me to the shadow realm yeah, <laughs> yeah. your horse will send you to the Grandpa! shadow realm um in, in the comments let's uh get some <clears throat> hashtags please save sir everain <laughs> some <laughs> sevens in the chat for sir everain yeah all right make uh, it rain for everain is there a movement you wish to make you you could he's twerking stand on top i mean let me see real quick i mean there there really there is no horse damage um that i'm seeing so yeah so yeah I, well I, hold on. ian did a thing what Ian did a thing. Go to go to the chat. Thanks to the clearly defined list of combat actions, he saw he could attempt to trample his foe and did so. Parentheses. Horses in sixth edition now have a non non charging damage statistic to go with their charging damage, so it's possible to determine just how much it hurts to have a charger step on you. Answer: It ain't fun. Close parentheses. Huh. There's a link. Oh, dang. I wish we could have seen the link. I got it right here. Hang on. Uh, copy. Let me see if I can do it. Read it. Read it real quick. Do you it, add it a might be an answer. Damage to charging damage? Yeah. We're, Fuck we're, you, Nightbot. Everybody, for tuning in right now, we are trying to figure out uh, trampling and uh, charging mechanics I, here. I take priority. There's your link. I don't know if you can see it. Chaosium.com um, slash blog it's in uh, the Twitch chat. So this is what Ian shared, and I just took it. And It's from the developer journal, it looks like. Let me see. We're reading mounted charges right now on the Chaosium Pendragon website. Um, it 
It looks a bit vague. Yeah. From the because like I don't know if we do you have the the horses stat block that, that's what i'm saying is like i don't i don't the... have the horse's stat if i if it said like horse hoof plus you know uh 2d6 yeah. i would be like yeah sure you you know trample over the sky but i don't want to put something that is not there there uh, but i appreciate it ian thank you for putting that in the chat um theoretically since we're still on the topic couldn't you make like adjust the horse's size? Like the horse's size is like eighteen, and then do something with like a like a size roll or something. Since we haven't changed subject yet, so I can still ask that question. Well, the thing is with combat, though. He, he, all right, so combat, you're making a melee roll, and then you get a movement roll, and I think mm. that's where it is. is like. The movement roll should not be any form of damage. I think that's where the fine line is. So, like, your melee rolls are going to usually cause damage or you're going to take damage. And then your movement is to either get get to another strategical point so you can make another melee roll at your next phase or get away from combat. You see what I'm saying? I I know. I mean, I understand. Like, in reality, yes, you would be able to do a lot with your your horse. <laughs> we just found a bug, basically. Right. Yeah. We just, we just found a bug in the game. Right, and I've never played Fifth Edition or any other uh, of the younger uh, Pin Dragon versions. Um, this is all new to me, so. Anybody with any other knowledge that sh would be and should be carried on to Pendragon 6th edition, please let me know um, on YouTube. A any feedback whatsoever is, you know, great for all of us and especially me. Uh, but Sir Abeloc, we're also just going to continue if you just want to stand your ground. Um, maybe think of this as also, uh, if you look at your traits, if you are a very... Um, just or a merciful you if you have more in those traits then perhaps you would not do something like this you wouldn't have your horse just trample its hooves all over this fallen night because this is another knight and another uh, another uh, nobleman that you would have some honor in battling and you wouldn't you know trample him like some lowly peasant or squire Okay. So, I know Trevor. I know. I, I I would I would want to do the same thing. <laughs> it's I mean, okay. Let's trust me. I, I've watched Game of Thrones and and many other medieval shows where it's fun to watch just people just be trampled over. I guess. Battle know? of the Bastards. Am I yes. right? Oh yeah. When John almost gets it's trampled. It's so over. good. It's so good. But so, so gory. Yeah. It's so good. Oh yeah, he's crawl. He's having like crawl through like the mountain of bodies, you know. Oh, that's I been hate up. I hate the scene where John is underneath all oh, all God, the guys, and he's just like getting trampled. And I'm you like, feel claustrophobic. You really you do, do and they did a really good job with it. Yeah, scene. I like. Ooh, all right. So back to it. Um, so Sir Avalok, you're standing your ground as you see this knight fall to the ground. Sir Swinhild, you are up next. Uh, Sir Clarion, I'm not forgetting you. So Sir Swinhild. You have also a Knight of Gore in front of you uh, that is fresh and fighting with you. What would you like to do? <clears throat> sir Swinhild? Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, am I dragging this one too long? No, no. Should I, I just it? did the wrong voice. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you have this knight of gore that's in front of you and is fighting and parrying with you. You are both landing blows to each other's swords, but are able to block and just parry one another's. And yep, so maybe. what would you like to do? I'd like to, would it be possible to like to use my sword to go and like for my own attack to try and yes, you know, get yes, him off balance? Yep, and Yep. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, so that'd be using my, my sword yep, to get a 12 or under. And you're mounted, so you'll get that's a plus a five. Nine, that's the, even plus five, it's a 17, I got a 19. 
All right, so a failure. That's a failure. And I get a critical success. Fuck! 17. I knew this would happen! <clears throat> so, I get an extra 46. I'm getting knocked off my horse, dude. This sucks. All right. 12. Okay, uh, the total is mm -hmm. 38 damage. Because you had a failure, you will not be able to use your armor. I'm dead. Amazing <laughs> grace. I have 30 HP. I, I'm dead. That How would straight up kill any of us. I'm dead. Sound. All right, let me, uh, let me just see if there's any rolls you need to make, like a death saves roll. Do, do, do. I, I'm dead, dude. <laughs> I do all that work! <laughs> Sir Swinhill, describe how you die. It's not noble. <laughs> it's not dignified. It's just, I, I fall off my horse and break my neck. That one quick scene. <laughs> and, and the, and it just... Yeah. <laughs> That's where, that's where the horse where, that, falls on top of me. That's where our Wilhelm scream comes in. All right, yeah. So... He thought he was a main character this whole time. <laughs> Got a side character death. All right, so this, uh, so you would need to make a dex roll. A dex roll, but I, I don't. Did not snap your neck. I, I, I think you, <laughs> I, I don't think, I think you're gonna do it because you're dead. <laughs> I mean, I, listen. <laughs> you're, you're, you're you dead. can roll you're... a death saves unless you're dead. Yeah, there, so there is no. <laughs> For fun, I'll make a dex roll to see what happens. That's a one. So you would succeed, but I because it's thirty-eight damage and your hit points are thirty I'm points. Dead. So this, I just Dude. read this. So uh, you should usually make a dex roll to keep your feet or stay in the saddle when you take damage <laughs> that is greater than your knockdown value. <clears throat> so I'll have to remember that for next time. So, sir, so I did. I did sir keep Clarion, my. So I died standing. Saved you That's kind of badass. It is badass. But you went out in style, Sir Swinhill. <laughs> I will give you the time to uh, tell us how your character goes out in style as this great climactic charge is happening. King Arthur is at your left side as you see Excalibur gleaming as he's fighting with these knights of gore. What happens to you? I get knocked off my horse. And I take a really fa a fatal blow to the head. There's blood just falling down on my face through my helmet. And yet, I stand. And I point my sword at the king. And I say, for Britain. And then I die. Still standing. The, the, the sword hand goes limp. Oh. Oh. The head drops. But I do not fall. And so you're like on your knees? Can, can I roll for a light yeah. breeze? That's pretty cool. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And perhaps I, I'll so add a one little piece bit of reference. Flavor, if you would allow this, uh, Charger, yes. your horse, Charger, seeing no, mine's my horse's name is Dave. Dave, okay. London's was Charger. Oh, that's right, <laughs> Dave. Yeah. Your horse, Dave, seeing you dead now, uh, hoof kicks, uh, the guy. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> uh, thank you. Sending him, uh, you know, many feet away. Uh, he has oh, oh, many ranks of knights of gore. I know Trevor. I know. I know. And, just just allow it <laughs> i die <laughs> it happens um so we we will miss you sir swinhild you will never be forgotten you will Thank live you. on in the halls of camelot one day yep but sir clarion you are still in the heat of battle perhaps you notice sir swinhild go down nope okay 
Uh, Sir Clarion, <laughs> what would you like to do? Uh, you, do shit. <laughs> you do have this knight of gore who is trying to get back up, uh, get up off his feet. What would you like to do? I'm uh, my long-winded swing at him. With a, uh, actually, no, I was going back for the next poke. I'm just going to poke him. Once again, with the lance from my horse. Uh, going for the neck, I have that plus five, so I can, I have to beat a 20. Okay. Um, as my value is 15. So it already make a success. So we roll 14, yet again. Excellent, and roll for damage. Okay, that's going to be 66, rolling and roll 20 here. For 25 total damage. Excellent. Uh, can you please describe how you kill this knight? Oh, and he's getting back up right through the throat. Not slitting it. It just pierces that throat. And, and it's and less just like than a the water throat. fountain. It just starts to pour out, but it's red and not clear. Like water. That's good. That's intended. Uh, we leave the uh, lance in his throat, maybe even setting it down straight up, whipping out the sword. Damn. Excellent. And as you go into sword combat, Sir Everain, Sir Clarion, and Sir Avalok, if you wish to give me, or I, I do require it, please give me... Where did it go? A An awareness roll, please, on your skills. Ooh, critical success, bitch! Excellent. Oh, Let's shit. go! Awareness is five, and I rolled a ten. Fuck. Oh, awareness is a skill, huh? Where are Do we have plus five on our skills, or just on our combat? Uh, I... just, just on your skills. So, Sir Amlock and Sir Everain, uh, you both succeeded, Sir Everain. You were a critical success. Sir Clarion, you are still in the heat of battle. You are fighting now with your sword, not disengaging from the enemy that surround you. Sir Swinhild is cracking a cold one in his afterlife. Pour one out. Uh, <laughs> Sir Avalok and Sir Everain, you are still close and near to Arthur. You have noticed that Sir Swinhild has fallen, especially you, Sir Everain. You have gained closer and closer to the moat with King Arthur. Down in the moat, it seems as though King Urien's and his bodyguards are down there, fighting with some of the other men-at-arms of Londinium. You notice the young King Arthur see King Urien's. And from his horseback, he jumps and pounces on King Urien's as he takes the king, the petty king, the rebel king, down underneath the water. You notice both of them vanish. Nice. Then, King Arthur arises with Urien's. Urien on his knees, and King Arthur standing. The water is at waist level. But Arthur at the time would probably be my height at the age of 16, so he's 5 foot 8, my height now. And... Hudson's 16 years old. Yes, I'm 16. <laughs> Those are two different measurements. Five foot eight, ladies. <laughs> two separate measurements. I don't lie about my I'm height on dating apps. I'm taken. I do. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, King Urien's is on his knees, and Arthur has Excalibur drawn with the sword <laughs> at King Urien's throat. And all you hear is, and you hear it the most, Sir Everin is yield to me yield to me noble lord and i will show you mercy a noble lord kneeling to a squire never and you hear a bunch of the other bodyguards and knights around them go never no and most of the battle stops just like that the soldiers in front of you sir clarion stop fighting you mm. and you hear the commotion also it's almost like this tingle in your spine Sir Avalok and Sir Everin, you feel it the most. It's almost like this power that you know to stop fighting. And everybody's gaze is fixed on the moat and where King Arthur and Sir Urien's is. 
after King Urien says what he just said, King Arthur takes a moment. You're right. You're right. That's why you, a noble lord, should knight me and make me a knight just as yourself. And he hands Excalibur over to King Uriens. Merlin emerges kind of in the thicket of the forest that all four of you once were many hours beyond this, looking down at this battle, seeing what is happening. Noticing this odd sight that Arthur is handing over Excalibur to King Uriens. You are all seeing this, amazed, uh, except you, Sir Swinhild. You're yep. <laughs> seeing darkness. Yep. And Arthur hands King Urien's Excalibur. Urien takes it and holds Excalibur. But just like Aragorn and Pippin holding the Palantir, it seems as though... King Urien's is seeing something that none of you are seeing and hearing something that none of you are hearing. You see his eyes widen as King Arthur kneels. You hear the other Knights of Gore say, Keep it, Urien, keep it! Talking about Excalibur. You hear another knight go, Strike him down, Urien's! Urien lifts Excalibur up. And by my Sir Michael and St. George, I knight you as one of the realm. Rise, King Arthur. For you are just as courageous as your father. And as King Arthur rises, Sir Urien takes a knee and kisses King Arthur's hand while handing back the sword of Excalibur. You hear him say that till my dying breath I will always regret doubting that you were Uther Pendragon's son. And with that you have saved the castle owned by King Leodegrantz. Arthur has gained an ally. Gained two allies. Two more allies, I guess. Well, I guess King Leo de Grants was already his ally. So he's gained an extra ally. However, there has been many knights that have fallen in this battle on both sides. And one that is very close to all of us, Sir Swinhild. There will be a great pyre lighted, or lit that night. <laughs> lighted lit that night and sir swinhild you will be in the center of all of them you were one of arthur's most trusted knights in his young age in his youth as king arthur would say a few words during this time and the pyres are lit and you are no more off to valhalla off to valhalla And with that, our noble knights, under the gaze of King Arthur, are victorious. And they will live to fight on another day. And Price will come back, perhaps, with another character. Perhaps we will I'd all like come to. back with another character. I'm sure Michael would love to come back with another character. <laughs> all, all, new nice. <laughs> all new knights. All new knights. Weak knights on Fox. <laughs> oh, night and night and night. <laughs> yes, uh, thank you for tuning in. That was our episode uh, concluded of the Siege of Camelide or Carmelide uh, here on Spot Hidden, where we've been playing Pendragon 6th Edition. So, yeah, I hope you're sticking with us, it. Ian. Yeah, thank you, Ian. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And thank you for sending that uh, link also. And rip Sir Swinhild. Uh, that rip. was very fun uh very cinematic i hope everybody enjoyed it we got a lot of combat in tonight which was great um but yeah 
Excuse me, acid reflux. Hey, so yeah, strikes again. Strikes again. The Empire Strikes Back. Great movie, my favorite. But yeah, so real quick, uh, we'll start with Trevor. Tell us uh, where we can follow you, Trevor, and is there anything coming up you'd like to tell us about? Well, hi, my name's Trevor. Uh, you can follow me at Huggy.Hubs. Uh, my spring break is coming up, so that's that's big news. Not for any of you, just you know, for me personally. My spring break is, is uh, starting tomorrow, or I guess Saturday, whatever. Go uh, party yeah. with Trevor down at Panama City. Yeah, Panama City. Weeknights Beach. on Fox. <laughs> BCB. Weeknights on Fox. Top. <laughs> Sweet nights on Fox. <laughs> He's going to be a live PD. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Uh, Ten crazy nights. Reno, nine, with one, Trevor. One. <laughs> Thank, um, you. Thank you. For no, you guys want to go drinking tonight? Tune in. <laughs> Sorry. Nah, uh uh police are there <laughs> what, what, what were you saying trevor no let them finish their bids yeah good? there you go <laughs> that was all i got okay yeah, anyway, I um i don't have really much anything going on uh except spot hidden all the time uh so i'll hand the baton over to uh i guess matt yes next up matt Hello, Matefson, Granola Clusters, whatever you want to call me. Uh, please check me out on the YouTube and or the Twitch if I ever actually stream ever again or upload ever again. We'll see. Um, stay tuned, Spot Hidden as well, because I have an inquiry with Michael, Trevor, and Price after this. Not Huddy, because, well, in this case, Huddy and London have already been a part of what I have redeveloped an old story that actually Ian would be familiar with as well. Um, so stay tuned for that here at Spot Hidden. Thank you. Wow, that's uh, that's interesting. It yeah, is. I it think is. I know exactly what you're talking about. You do. I don't. That would be fun to watch. Uh, is that coming up soon? Yes, I um. So listen, I'm a realtor. I'm now certified. They gave me nice. the pin and everything. Uh, <laughs> he said, but during he said the... I'm a realtor. Ho ho ho. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, actually not. So they uh, want to buy a castle. <laughs> want to buy a castle? Uh, the reason I bring it up is because they had us in classes, courses, um, for two days in a row, and I was like, you know what? No. And I just wrote the entire entire day. And I fixed it. Nice. I, I hope, fixed my I story. Hope none of the people that hold the classes are watching this right now. Yeah, me too. Well, I already knew it because my broker is better than everyone else's, so I That's already good. knew all the content. That's yeah. Good. So, yep. So, anyway, uh, take it away, Chris. So next Thursday, are we? We're looking at next Thursday, or uh, I think we could. Well, I still we need might have another thing next Thursday. We're still figuring stuff out. Here's okay. the problem. Here's the problem. If we want to stop and and bring this up this has been an ongoing thought of of the uh the effect of ai generated art on the artistic community i'm broke mm. i want to make that very clear cool. um so what it comes down to when it comes down to something like mid journey um to create assets for this one shot story i want to make for call of cthulhu does that make me a sh this could be rhetorical. It could it could be a something to ponder, but does it make me a shitty person to want to make my assets at least for now with this AI generated art because it's quick, it is free, um, and it's as close as I can get to what I'm looking for, opposed to having zero assets. I, you know I, what I mean? My personal opinion is I I don't I don't think so because I wanted to use some artwork with ai artwork you know some people yeah. are going to be mad but some people aren't you know uh i think get on get on it while you can because i guarantee in the next five years ar ai artwork will be banned in some way so, i also yeah. think the biggest problem is like using ai artwork and then claiming it as your own because that's kind of like stealing from people oh but yeah if, but if you're just like using ai artwork to like tell a story and not like monetizing it for yourself or trying to gain notoriety for yourself i don't think you're necessarily stealing anyone's artwork nor are you profiting from it right so yeah. i think using it for your campaign is more than kosher yeah so oh, like I not profiting that, yeah. from it but just you want to tell your story with some interesting yeah. pictures sure well it would be profiting but it, it would i mean well oh. actually i haven't published but i don't know if i would publish it with the ai art oh yeah, yeah, um, yeah. but you, I, you uh, could use the ai art and then like it has been done before artists use it as like a reference like it's kind of exactly. what i was thinking can you 
Oh that, yeah, that's oh, a good yeah, yeah. Well, it has with been that, done I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know about. Uh, you can publish with AI art. I promise you. you can. Matt, let me, um, let me draw you yeah. something. I'll draw you something. All right, just real quick. We'll we'll get to that in yeah, the, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll the green room, that, the yeah. after show. Yeah. But uh, Sir Swinhild, or our very own Price Everett, uh, we really appreciate you being a part of this. Of who, course. Who I are you? It. Or and where 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 who where are you? Find you. Um, so, <laughs> hi, uh, again, I'm Price. Rest in peace to the big boy. Uh, I miss him already. Um, you can follow me here on Twitch, uh, at PriceVA. Uh, I'm starting to stream a little bit more than I used to. I kind of went on a pretty big hiatus, but I'm hoping to like, stream at least a couple, like, once or twice a week starting soon. Um, <clears throat> but other than that, spot hidden stuff related, uh, I do have ideas cooking, and maybe we might do the first of that ideas here shortly, because it would, kind of, the point of it is a lot, it's not a lot of prep time, so it'd be very easy to just kind of go, but we'll see. Um, really, it's going to depend, you know, because I'm, I'm, I'm one of the new guys here, so really, it's going to depend on uh, really what everybody wants to do, but hopefully, we'll have something cooking. Um, I haven't DM'd in like three and a half years, so that would be an experience all on its own just to see me flail a little bit. But uh, yeah, as always, love being a part of the Spot Hidden crew. It's always a, it's a pleasure and an honor. As always, rest in peace, uh, Sir Swinhild. And um, see you guys. I'm assuming next week we'll be doing something. I don't know what it's going to be, but we'll be doing something. And uh, or So if it's not next week, it's whenever we're doing something again soon. And uh, love being a part of this as always. So thank you guys very much. And thank you for tuning in. Thank you. And thank you. And uh, last but not least, uh, from Dunder Mifflin, where can we see next, Michael? Where can we follow you? Uh, at Michael underscore B Scott underscore on Twitter. If you want to see the ramblings of a madman who just retweets lots of things about public transportation. Uh, but thank you for tuning in. Go call your mom and drink some water and tune in next week for another episode of Monday Night Raw. I mean, spot hidden. <laughs> on fuck. <clears throat> Sorry. And thank you for being a good sport, Michael. Uh, I sir, don't think I was a good sport. I think I was very bitchy the whole time. No, no, you weren't. <laughs> sir, sir Everin, I, I, I know there's something that I was missing. And next time when we come back, perhaps with The Adventure of the Great Hunt and with London, who will join us, hopefully, uh, I'll have that fixed. But until then, I am Hudson Hubbard. You can follow me at huddy.hubs on Instagram. Or you can follow me at my other channel, Carbonized Productions, where we open Magic the Gathering packs and play Indiana Jones and the Emperor's New Groove. Until the next time, if it's next week or the week after next or next year, we shall see you then. We shall see you anon and stay spoopy. Adios. Bye!